Welcome to the Blue Lounge, welcome to the stream, I hope you guys are having a fantastic evening. Big up to Blue Clouds TV, welcome to the stream, yeah please like the video, much appreciated. CFC Steven, big up to you, welcome to the stream, welcome to the stream. Listen people, my second stream within the past couple of hours um i did a um an experimental stream on my other channel the arabic language channel swoopstar big up to you big up to you swoopstar uh so i did a, a stream on my arabic uh channel uh my first one my first one now we're back on the blue lounge um yeah i'm speaking english gabriel was it was there in the arabic one and so was zaidi big up to both of you big up to both of you for being on both streams. Yeah, now we can speak English. Yeah, no, um, Arabic is my mother tongue, but it's also my second language. English is my first language. So it's easier for me to communicate in English than it is in Arabic, but I wanted to, to do that. Luke, big up to you. Big up to Luke. Big up to Luke. People, my second stream. And um, one thing I do know is with the likes being hit, People are going to come to the stream. So let's all hit that like button. Let's, we've got 21 people in here. Let's get 21 likes in the, um, on the board. That would be much appreciated. Much appreciated. 21 likes on the board before the get-go. We've got 16 at the minute. We've got the 16 at the minute. Let's get that to 21. Uh, 22 now. 22 people in the stream. Listen, people. Today, I mean, I did say yesterday... <clears throat> excuse me, that we were not going to stream for a couple of days. But to be honest, I wanted to stream because I want to talk about this. I want to talk about this because it's been a very interesting transfer window, not only for Chelsea, but for a whole bunch of clubs, a whole bunch of clubs. And I want to, I want to um, watch the uh, YT ads. Hey, Mikhail, big up to you. He, the man watched the ad and he smashed the like button. What more do you want from a man? Watch the ad, smash the like button. Don't skip the ad. <laughs> Mikhail, love you, my man. I love you, Mikhail. Big up to you. Big up to you. Kasim. Kasim, big up to you. Welcome to the stream. Also, from my uh, from my previous stream, Chelsea Blue. Welcome, lads. Welcome, Chelsea Blue. Uh, the only time... Well, 
the only teams that are favourites are Manchester United. All right, all right, let's talk about that. Mikhail, jump on, man. Jump on. I haven't seen you for ages, Mikhail. I haven't seen you for ages. Jump on. Unless you're working. Unless you're working, then I can understand. Then I can understand. Um, so if you can jump on, the link is in the group. Jump on. Um, lads, I may open this discussion later on. I may open this discussion later on to the general public. I may do that. I just want to give priority to the guys on the panel. So I'll give them five, ten minutes. If nobody joins, then we'll open it to the masses. Loco Costa, big up to you, my man. Big up to you, Loco Costa. One of the um, the OGs on this channel. Loco Costa, one of the OGs on the channel. And so is uh, Zaidi, by the way. One of the OGs on the channel. One of the OGs. Yeah. Um, Blue Class TV and Gabriel, you guys are paid subscribers. You, you, uh, you're members of this channel. You know, you know. That's, a, that's a next level thing, man. Next level. Members. Subscribers, members. These guys are members. Gabriel, Blue Class TV. You must have access to some emojis. You must have access to some emojis. Steve, Bern you know what? I've seen you, man. Steve Bernardi, you haven't been on for ages. Or, or, or am I mixing you up with somebody else? Brian, big up to you, Brian. Big up to you. Big up to you. Listen, people. Manchester United. Manchester United are the, um, the biggest challenges, are they, to um, the title? Or is it Chelsea? Is Chelsea the biggest challenges? Or is it Manchester United? What do you guys think? Guys, give me one second. I'm going to be away literally for two seconds. I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Just give me two seconds. Yeah, sorry lads, I had to check on something. I had to check on something. Bobby, welcome to the stream. How you doing, my man? Hey, Mo, hi. hi. I thought I'll catch up with you. No, Bobby, streaming. brilliant. Thank you for jumping on. Thank you for jumping yeah. on. Um, Bobby, the question is this. Yeah. The question is this. Who are the biggest contenders for the Premier League title? Who will take the title away from Manchester City? A lot of people are talking about Manchester United because now they have Ronaldo. Are Chelsea contenders? Can Chelsea win the title this season? I want to hear, I want to hear your thoughts on this, man. I, I personally think that Manchester City remain favourites. They're a stable team. They don't lack much, apart from a striker. And I think they'll be very difficult to for anybody to beat. Having said that, with the... I don't know. I, I felt a level of satisfaction with the sign, signing of Saul that has surprised me. I didn't think I'll be that pleased with it. But I, I, the more I think about it, the more it rings positive, even without me knowing too much about the player. Um, his attitude, you know, you saw him at the bridge. He, he, he just feels Chelsea. And I think he could really make a difference to us. Um, so I, I would not count Chelsea out. But at the same time, um, Liverpool... You know, Liverpool, their, in, uh, their injuries are back and nothing's really changed. There's still that same threatening Liverpool that won um, all those trophies and the Premier League, uh, what, two seasons ago? So, um, and of course, there's Man United. Now, you know, I know um, Max yesterday said that United have a kind of imbalanced uh, team and I, I see what he's saying. 
Uh, I don't look at them as favourites, but, you know, I'm watching Ronaldo, you know, even at his age, he looks so fierce, so determined. Um, um, I'm watching him now, actually, playing for Portugal. And I think he's going to make a considerable difference to them. I don't think they are as weak as people are assuming they are. Uh, I just think, yeah, they have some aged players, but they're going to be up there. So I know I've given you a kind of long-winded answer, but there is no simple answer in this Premier League, not this season. It's not going to be easy. I, I think there are four realistic contenders that I've mentioned them, but there are also going to be some outsiders that are going to give quite a few bloody noses. The likes of Everton, West Ham, they're going to be strong. Tottenham's looking better. Um, who knows, you know, where they could end up. Mm. And, um, well, I, I don't know what's going on at Arsenal. I'm confused, to be brutally honest. I, I, totally don't think Arsenal, I don't think Arsenal know what's going on at Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I am genuinely, I, I'm even, you know, I, like, I know I like to poke fun at them. I don't like them, but, you know, I am genuinely confused as to what's going on in that club. So unfortunately, sorry, bro, I, I can't give you a direct answer, but I've had to touch on all the things that I think are threats, but still Man City remain favourites just based on their consistency over the past two seasons. Um, I'll, 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 I'll respond to that. Um, Mikhail, the link is there. The link is there. Double check because everybody here has clicked on that link. So it is there, Mikhail. Uh, check it out again uh, maybe you need to refresh but the link is definitely there um, I think there is I mean I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna transfer to DJ Sav because I think he can probably put more light on this but you know one of the weaknesses that Manchester United have in their pursuit of the title is the lack of leadership the lack maybe of technical know-how that you'd expect from Oli that you'd expect yeah. from Oli and I think the fact that they have signed a player manager a player director a player everything <laughs> and Ronaldo <laughs> I think I think they might have fixed that issue yeah. now, and I want and I want to bring in DJ Sav because if anybody can give us an, an insight to this is my Portuguese panelist <laughs> DJ Sav DJ Sav welcome to the stream my man uh, big up guys how you all doing you all good Big up. We're good. We're good. We're good. Uh, DJ, yes, yes DJ, mate. enlighten us, mate. Enlighten us into this Ronaldo situation at Manchester United. Yeah, listen. Um, look, I think, I think, I think bringing Ronaldo in is just it. It will obviously. I mean, obviously, people will talk about saying they've got um, their uh, they got um, obviously got Bruno Fernandes there. You've got obviously Pogba that can be you know those two main lead if those two big you know two big people to shout on the shout on the field. Then you obviously got what's his name um, the defender at the back. I forget his name now. The one they signed from Leicester. It's not coming to me at the moment. But anyway, I think you guys Maguire. know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Maguire. Still, Maguire. Yeah, I think I think Ronaldo. We listen, Ronaldo. We know big personality um, icon. Um, the guy is going to bring you know. We know what he did the first time round. He went to Portugal. The guy's just a born winner. You know he's he's he, you know he's he's going to go to that he's going to go to that football club and listen if if United don't perform um, with him in that team um, um, it's going to be curtains for Oli um, I think I think that that's what I think will personally happen I think Ronaldo there going down there is to bring literally a lot of um, I mean he's going to obviously people talk about saying being disciplined he's going to bring a lot of um, a lot of um, his pers Ali obviously is going to be there and look he, he's just uh, look I'm. Obviously, being um, obviously, people. I, I was getting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, rubbish today coming from tweets today from people because I was supporting Ronaldo for what he did today um, against Ireland. I was just doing it because I'm a proud Portuguese man and I was proud to see the man break a record and score two good goals. He could have had a hat trick today, and he's one of our icons in Portugal. Um, I, I can go on about Eusebio. I can go on about Rui Costa. I can go on about Pauleta. I can go on about all these players, mate. Yeah, these are all icons in Portugal, right? And he's one of them, Luis Figo. And, you know, and I, I was getting some slack on Twitter today why I was supporting a Manchester United player. What people don't realise, I'm not supporting Ronaldo, the Manchester United player. I'm supporting Ronaldo, the Portuguese player. 
and what he brings to us as an icon in our country. And he's just absolutely superb. And, um, and for me, he's just going to bring that to Manchester United. And this is where I think they could do pretty well. They could compete uh, for the top, this, uh, for the you know, for the Prem this season. I really think they can do. They have got the they have got the tools there now. The guy will still. I mean, people say he's thirty six. He's slowing down. You saw today in the Ireland game. You only really watched that game today. He showed no signs of that today. The man's a winner. He's won everything everywhere he's gone, and he'll continue to do that. And he's a big, big personality. And you know he's, that's what he's, he's not bring back slowing to that. down, mate. He's, he's not, not this is what I'm trying, exactly. Well. This is what I'm trying to say, mate. <laughs> and, uh, people saw him today play, mate. The guy is no waste. And the guy's going to be up there again this season. Don't get you know him and Bruno Fernandes at United. They're they're going they're, they're going to com- they're, they're going to combine pretty well this season. United are going to be a danger this season. I can say that right now. Um, mm. But if they don't, then it's all going to come down on Ollie, isn't it? I think Ollie will be mm. the one who's under more more pressure there than anyone else. That's just my honest opinion. Yep, yep. No, uh, you you make some some good points there, DJ. Um, Blue Class TV, big up to you and thank you for your uh, um, super sticker. Always appreciate your support on the on the channel. Thank you, Nizion from Blue Class TV. Uh, listen, DJ, um, I'm not Portuguese, but I love watching Ronaldo play. Yeah, I love watching Messi play. Same. I love watching exactly. Neymar play. These are superstars of the game. These are talented football players. We enjoy watching them play. And, um, you know, we support them as, you know, the icons of the game. And if you happen to be Portuguese and you're a fan of Ronaldo and, you, you know, you're, you're going to praise Ronaldo, you know, that you know, that's just natural. That's just natural. And if, if people are close-minded and they can't see that, then, you know, that's that's their issue. And I'm not really going to go there. But, um, yeah, no, Ronaldo is definitely a fantastic player. And he is going to have a massive, massive impact on Manchester United. People, today the topic is Chelsea. The topic is can Chelsea win the Premier League? But for us to address that properly, for us to give that topic a proper analysis and a proper examination, we are going to have to also talk about the contenders. So those of you joining the stream, they'll be like, why are they talking about Man United? Well, because we haven't talked about Liverpool yet. We haven't talked about City yet. We're going to be talking about all of those as well as our chances to win the Premier League. All right, so this is the topic and we are going to spend quite a bit of time discussing this. So make sure you guys get a snack, get a drink. And before you do that, make sure you've hit that like button. And if you're new on the Blue Lounge, make sure you subscribe. Share this link, share this stream with, the, with with your social media platforms, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you, you have access to. Share it. Let's get as many people in here as possible. Kasim, welcome to the stream. How you doing, my man? I'm okay, thank you. Thanks for having me, Mo. Top man. Pleasure. Pleasure to have you on, uh, Kasim. Kasim, Chelsea winning the Premier League title. That is our number one goal today. Chelsea chasing down, hunting down Manchester City is our aim today, is our defined ambition, statement, target as per to kill. Chelsea are building a team that nobody wants to play as per to kill. Tell me your thoughts on us winning the title this season. Uh, I think we're going to win the title this season. Uh, now, I'm sure because Man City didn't sign number nine as well. And they played, played us three times, Pep, without false number nine. And Chelsea figured him out. He couldn't beat us. Um, uh, for us to go out to get Lukaku, to address the issue. And now, so on the gas as well. I think uh, I think Chelsea going to win. I think uh, Ma- uh, Ma- regardless, Man United. Think about this, guys. Logically, when you get a big players like Pogba, Cristiano Ronaldo, Varane, and look at look at Oli. He looks at Oli and he said, "I know you're cruelless, mate. Could they big personality?" And that becoming an issue. That that's why Man United won't win the league. So they get top top manager, Klopp, Pep, Carlo Ancelotti. These top profile manager with big personality. Like I said to you, 
all Man United, never mind the fans, all Man United players, they look at him and say, we know you're not that great. And that has become an issue. So I am not worried much about Man United. Uh, I'm not worried much about Liverpool because they don't spend much. Uh, they don't have that uh, much money as Man City and Chelsea. Uh, we heard Firmino got injured. This is off for four to five weeks. And uh, first, 11 is great. When he started hit the injury, Salah, Van Dijk, whatever... Well, Liverpool coming problem. So I am not right. worried. I'm not we'll worried. Focus. We'll, we'll, fo we'll focus on them in a minute. We'll focus on them in a minute. I think, I think, we, 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 you know, what you're saying is um, squad depth is crucial. Yeah. Squad depth is crucial. And I think as, we, as where we stand today, Chelsea are doing okay when it comes to squad depth. Chelsea are doing just fine. Couch Critic, I haven't seen you for a while. I hope you're doing well. I hope everything is good with you. Welcome back to the uh, to the Blue Lounge. What's up, fellas? It's been a minute. I'm still actually on vacation, but um, it's been excellent. Mate. Excellent. Um, yeah, I just wanted to jump in because I hadn't been on in a while, and you know the wife's out with the kid right now, so I have a little bit more time. But uh, yeah, it's great to be back. And uh, with regards to United, I, I think I'm just going to basically just uh, steal some of the the wind out of everyone's uh, uh, comments so far. Um, I do think that they are going to be a threat just because they're going to have personalities on the pitch that can win you games. They have match winners all over the pitch right now. But in terms of, in terms of like putting together an actual squad, a team, an actual unit, I don't know if they've shown me that they can, they can be that squad yet. Uh, they have a, a lot of individual talent, whether or not they can uh, formulate and make that into a squad, a, a team, a team capable of winning, you know, the majority of the games. That's another thing all, to, all in itself. And I think what we have here under Tuchel, like we, we obviously have some star talent, but I don't think that we have any one particular individual that is, stands out above anybody else. The reason why we won the Champions League last year wasn't because we had individual brilliance on the pitch. It was because we had a, a solid squad and a solid philosophy, a solid, you know, a, a solid, uh, solid, solid team chemistry, really. And that came to the fore right from the Atletico games right to the end. So... I think Chelsea are definitely in with a shout for the title. It's going to be hard because I still do think that uh, City do have the minerals to do it once again. But um, with what we've assembled in depth and what we have in terms of team chemistry and, you know, Thomas Tuchel's tactics, I think that we have a squad capable of, um, you know, of, of pipping uh, City to the title. But again, like it's, it's not, it's very hard to tell what you're going to see from City or United until they actually play as a full squad uh we haven't quite seen that yet because the has been out for city and obviously ronaldo is a large like needle mover for uh, for for united so um yeah that's that's going to be a challenging uh, proposition going forward but like i said it all comes down to teams for me and if you don't have that squad balance like kazim was saying you know ronaldo being a big personality bruno fernandez being a big personality uh, Pogba being a big personality and maybe, you know, Ali not necessarily garnering the respect that, you know, uh, the respect of the dressing room, just because he hasn't really won as a manager, it might be problematic for them going forward. But again, it's hard to say, you know, if Ronaldo aligns under Ali, then everyone else falls into place, you'd like to believe. Yep. Yep. Um, I wanted to bring in Boogeyman, but he's he's busy for a couple of minutes, so we'll, we'll get him in in a minute. I want to I want to just um, address this point. I want to address this point. Manchester City. Oh, Boogie Man is back. Boogie Man is back. Um, I'll, 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 I'll make the statement. I'll make the statement and then we'll also introduce Boogie Man into the conversation. Manchester City have been the, uh, what's the word here? For, for lack of a better word, have been the bogey team of the, uh, of the Premier League. They're the team that nobody wants to play. They're the team that people fear. When they, when they see the fixture list and they see that we're playing Manchester City in two weeks, it's going to have an effect on them from today. You saw Arsenal talking about the City game as being one of the, you know, the feared oppositions. They didn't, they didn't talk about Chelsea. They were talking about City. 
can Chelsea become that powerhouse that nobody wants to play? Is Manchester City on the decline? Because we saw Chelsea slap him around last season. And I think Chelsea are stronger this season than they were last season. So, Boogeyman, I want you to tell me if you think Chelsea are contenders and if you think Manchester City has lost the edge. Boogeyman, welcome to the stream. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing it. I'm doing good. Uh, how are you guys doing? DJ, Bobby, good. Asim, hey. and uh, Top Touch, Cow. Big up, Boogeyman. How you doing, bro? You right? What's up, Biggie? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Hey, um, it, it will be disingenuous for me to say City is not contending. Just City is still contending. I think Liverpool is the favorite, and uh, we are the the biggest threat to Liverpool. We are, but City is still there. The the, the reason is. Uh, they still have a complete team, minus a striker. But they won the league last last season without a striker. So, and we have a Pepe Guardiola there. Uh, the good thing about City, they always win all the games against middle team, middle table team, and the bottom team. They seem to win those games pretty handily. And uh, Liverpool always win most of the game against the top six. And uh, Manchester City seems to struggle with the top, top four, top six. But Chelsea is the, uh, in French, uh, we said, is the, the dark horse. Yeah, the, is, I think it's singing in English, it's singing English yeah. also. Chelsea, okay. is, Chelsea is like the dark horse. They but, can but, beat but do anybody. You, do, you, do you think Chelsea is a dark horse, really? Because the dark horse normally is an underdog. It's an underdog yeah, that has the ability. That is, mm. Chelsea can beat any team in the league. Uh, and and at the same time, Chelsea can lose to any team in the league, which is scary for a Chelsea fan because I don't see Liverpool losing really to Watford. Watford is not even in Premier League anymore. I don't see Liverpool uh, losing to Brighton, for example. But it may happen, but the chances are pretty small. But I feel like Chelsea can sometimes. I mean, Chelsea under Tuchel is something that is, is a different thing. Yeah, that's for sure. I can tell you that. Mm. But so uh, I think Chelsea can win this league, but we need to be consistent when it comes to play with the bottom and the middle team, middle table teams. If we can win those games properly, and because of our uh, particularity, we can beat Liverpool, we can beat City, even in Manchester City, we can beat Liverpool at Anfield. That's why I call Chelsea the dark horse. Nobody knows exactly what kind of what kind of, what face we went to put up uh, when we play against Liverpool or how what kind of performance we're going to put up. So I think it's good for uh, the emotion part, but it's not really, um, it's not reassuring for us as a fan. Uh, so if you ask me, is, Chelsea, is Manchester City in the decline? I don't think so. They still have their, their level. They still have uh, whatever level of performance they have last season. They still have it. It's just other team like Chelsea are getting better and better and better. But I don't think Chelsea, we should never think better than Manchester City or we are, how would you say this? Uh, we are favorite for the title now. I don't think so. I think Liverpool and Manchester City are still the two top, but we are in the chase, that's for sure. Uh, that's how I see the league. At this, okay. This All right. All right. Then, 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 then let, me, let, me, let me put the question like this. Let me put the question like this. The top four, the top four that finished the um, um, the Premier League last season, us, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, are we the only contenders? And I think Bobby alluded to maybe Tottenham might be in there with a shout, uh, maybe Leicester, West Ham, maybe there's <clears> other teams that can be in, in there with a shout. Do you guys agree that there is anyone else outside of those uh, those four uh, teams that can win it or is it really just those four and then if we agree it's only those four then um, what is the gap because what I was trying to say is this when I was saying that Man, Man City are on a decline I'm not saying Man City are not contenders anymore no, what I'm saying is I think we're not going to see a 20 point gap between first and second anymore 
I think it's going to be a lot more tighter, especially this season. Yeah. So I want, I want, I want to know what you guys think. Yeah, if I can just chime in quickly. Yeah. I, I, I was actually thinking that. And I said, pretty sure I said it a couple couple streams ago, like that City have hit their ceiling. Not that they're in decline, but they're not going to get much better than they've shown us the last two or three years. And the chasing pack is getting a lot closer right now. That's That's what we're seeing right now. I mean, how can you improve on what is it like a hundred some odd points that they had a couple seasons ago? How can you improve on, you know, like the 90 something points they had on, uh, you know, they, they're at their ceiling right now and the chasing pack is getting stronger. Um, I do think that Chelsea have the capability to put, to pull them back a bit just because they're going to be, there's going to be more teams taking points off of city this year than there have been in the past. And if that happens, then, and we actually take care of business and start eating our food like we're supposed to, then uh, we might be able to, to, you know, close the gap a bit. Um, but yeah, I, as you say, like, I do think that the, the top four right now are basically going to spread, put a gap between the five, five to eights right now. I don't think that there's going to be eight teams contending for the title come week 17, 18. I think it's going to be four teams and it's the four that we all know. It's going to be Liverpool, Chelsea, United and City. That's how I see it right now. Is Chelsea a fear team yet? Boogeyman? Yeah. One one hundred percent. You will never hear any pundits on the TV or whatever it will say. Chelsea are not really scary. We are scary. The thing is, I just don't know what to expect this season because if I look at last season under Tuchel, it was pretty much like a zero mistake. Like we've always performed in ninety percent to ninety five percent of of the time. We we are on our game all the time. Team are getting scared all the time. But this season is a long season. I don't know if we're going to be able to keep that rhythm for the entire season. So for me, if we keep what we did under Choco last season, through this season, that just means what? Pretty much the game against bottom and the middle table team, we are, we're going to win them all. And guess what? We go to Anfield, we have 1-0, and we will beat Liverpool at Stamford Bridge. We will beat Manchester City at Stamford Bridge. And then we can go to Manchester City and get results. And Manchester City knows that. Pep, Pep is scared of us, that's for sure. So when you put all those things in consideration, you tend to think, yeah, we are favorite. But I just don't think we are that we are there yet because uh, we need to see our performance against team like West Ham, Aston Villa. We need to see our performance against team like Everton. Because those games, we tend to tie them for stupid reason. Well, Manchester City go there and just beat those people three nothing, four nothing, and then they keep moving. So that's why we need to win the league. It's not against a City because we know we will perform against top four team or top six team, but it's the bottom and the middle table. If we can win those games, it goes those game handily. I think we we good, we good. I think we win this league. So I'm not sure what to say when someone tell me it's, it's just going to win the league. I think our performance against middle and middle uh, bottom and middle table teams are yeah. the key this season. That's how I see it. Um, I, 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 want, I want to bring you in, Kasim, but before I bring you in, Man City so well sold. They let go of uh, Aguero, their uh, prolific goal machine. They brought in uh, Grealish. Grealish is really a more of a creative player, more of a a uh, chance creator rather than, than a chance converter. Ten. Number 10, yeah. So, um, I've got a couple of comments in the chat saying that Man City are stronger this season. Do you agree? Do you think Man City have strengthened or do you think Man City are weaker? Um, and in regards to the title challenge, where do you see Man City? Take your uh, him. Okay, I, I think I disagree. I think Man City going to drop a lot of points this season. I really, really do. I think uh, Chelsea is going to be far stronger than anybody else. I, I'm not sure even Man City is going to finish second, you guys. Um, if you look at De Bruyne, he's the main man, and now he's always injured. Now, De Bruyne. And that's becoming an issue. And they had the problem. When we played him, and they played like the end of last season, uh, Pebble tried to adapt that formation, false nine, and it was just not working for them. And that's why they wanted to get Kane and they collapsed and he didn't ad address the issue. I think Man City, comparing to Chelsea this season, 
they are in decline. I'm not saying they're a bad team. I think Chelsea far stronger than Man City. Uh, and uh, really, they missed a the trick by signing Grealish and instead of signing number nine, Haaland, Lukaku. And that's what's becoming stronger. I don't think even they're going to finish second. That's my opinion. All right. All right. All right. Um, Bobby, I want to bring in Bobby on this. Bobby, do you think Chelsea um, are going to have issues with fatigue? Do you think Chelsea don't have a, a strong enough team, a strong enough squad to um, to perform well this season? I mean, we've got a lot of competitions that we're in. Um, and Premier League is the biggest one. But do you think we're going to have issues? Bobby, can you hear me? All right, I think Bobby might not be um, might not be there. Uh, same question to you, DJ Sav. Yeah, um, look, I think I think what I think what our situation was last season. We seem to have been beating the the so called bigger teams last season, um, but I think it, we, we were just dropping points against the smaller teams. When I say the smaller teams, I won't call Aston Villa a small team. I won't obviously call West Ham that, but we just seem to be dropping points against them. I think this season, I think um, what Kasim has alluded to is that, and and Couch Critic as well, and Boogeyman is, is the fact that we need. I think this season, I think for us, it is the Premiership. And I think um, the only thing that would worry me slightly would be, yeah, will we get fatigued because of the tournaments that we're going to be in? As I think Chris Meister said in his comment section, big up to him, by the way, is a very, very valid point what he said. That could be the one thing that could maybe do it because I think we, we got to, I think we got to, we got to go to this club tournament, this world club tournament. And this is the, I, I tell you what, I said this to you yesterday, I think, Baggy, this is the one trophy that is missing from our, from our cabinet. We've got literally everything else. We've got the Super Cup, Premiership, Champions League, everything else. You name it, we've got them all. You know, Cup Winners' Cup, everything. That's This is the one trophy I want to see us win um, this season, along with the Premiership, obviously. Champions yeah. League, if we go as far as that as well, I'll be happy. Um, in all the tournaments, I want us to win. Obviously, as a Chelsea fan, I'd love to see my club win everything. And I think we have got the squad to do it. We have got our number nine in Lukaku um, to do that for us. I just think my only concern would be if any of our players get um, pick up or get any slight little injuries on little knocks here and there would be my only worry. But I still still think we have still got the players to still to come in and do that. Um, so if Lukaku was to go out, okay, people are not rating him from last season. Timo Werner can obviously go there. We can play the false nine with Havertz. You know, we've got all we have got the tools there to do it, mate. And I think we can do it. But it's just keeping all our players fit. And I think that will be the biggest thing for Tuchel this season is keeping them all fit. And other than that, we have got a squad to literally challenge on all fronts as far as I'm concerned. And we can do it, mate. I really think we can. It'll be tough, but I think it's never been done before where all the clubs won everything, won everything in one season. If we can go and do that, mate, oh, mate, it would just be what history for our football club. And I still think we can do it. And we've got the manager. We've got the manager to do it as well. So yeah. that for me is my confidence, is the manager. It's just that confidence he has in him. And he puts across to the players, and the players yeah. just want to go out there every week, and they want to play for him. We saw that against Liverpool, mate. Down to ten men, look how they were. I mean, people say going to Anfield was the hardest thing you can ever do. We had ten players who, who, who literally, we could have even stole that game had Lukaku or Kovacic took their chances. So for me, yes, DJ, I think we got DJ, everything. DJ, DJ, was Liverpool lucky not to have lost that game? Um. Look, they did have chances, Liverpool. Um, I'm not going to sit here and say they didn't have chances. They did have chances. Um, but they could have lost, but they could have won as well. But they didn't take their chances. So, either way on that question, they could have won, lost or draw, mate, which, thank God for us, right. they drew. I'll, I'll, I'll rephrase. Were we, were we unlucky not to have won that game? Um, yes, I think we were um, in terms of Lukaku and Kovacic missing. And obviously, Mason Mount's miss as well. Had that gone in when we were 1-0 up? God knows you'd have not what have happened. If Mason Mount scored that second goal, we'd, I think we'd have gone and won that game. Even if we went down to 10 men, I still think we'd have held on to win that game. Couch to be critic. fair, to Couch be fair, critic. Mo- what, what's Sorry. that, Cassie? Couch critic. Had we have had a different referee, would we have had a different <laughs> result? Referee performance. Uh, I mean, the, the sending off is a sending off. Like, let's not... I Maybe not the sending off, but it was definitely a penalty, right? Yeah, the game as a whole, there was a lot of fouls that went one way. Uh, it seemed like Fabinho had like about ten or eleven fouls, and he never got carded once. So yes, as a as a refer as a performance from that referee, he was not up to the standard of the Premier League at all. So um, it's it's e- you could easily look at that game and say Chelsea could have like 
rescued possession more than the amount of times that could have helped them control the game a bit more um, just through the, the fouling and whatnot. So yeah, with a better ref, we probably would have stand a better chance of winning. Um, I'd also say that um, the resilience in the squad is another thing that we can like look at and say, yes, we are title contenders this year. Like Tuchel has these guys drilled, trained, and they all understand the rule. Like when we drop back into that, five, like it was like a 5-3-1 or whatever it was, 5-3-1, we looked so organized, so compact. It was so hard for Liverpool to play through those lines. And that's the type of drilling, that's the type of understanding that you need to have. And you can see guys like in the midfield, like when, uh, when they had a runner run past them, they're talking to the defenders in behind them, like telling them to pick them up. Like, yo, he, here comes Salah, pick up Salah. And you can see that sort of like communication on the pitch all over the place. And you don't see that in uh, a lot of the, the Premier League sides, even the contending sides, you know? So I think we do have that understanding on the pitch. Uh, with regards to City, I still think they're, they are a threat, obviously. And the fact is, they don't necessarily need the brunt. As much as he is their, their best player, they're winning games without the brunt. You know, I mean, that, that's the level of, uh, of execution that team has. Um, so it's something to consider, like, going forward. They're, they're not as one-dimensional or one-player one de- uh, dependent as some of the teams that we've seen in the past. Yep. Um, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. And um, this comment here by Brian, I actually tweeted about this uh, today. Uh, the FA um, have charged us for two, uh, um, two issues. The first one was the little um, tiff that we had in the um, um, in the last minutes of the first of the first half and also uh, what happened after the uh, the final whistle uh, in regards to the uh, the players complaining and the players taking some action um, but the FA was quick the FA was quick to penalize Chelsea the FA didn't make a statement in respect to the decisions that were made by the referee, which led to the players behaving in that way. Fair. I don't understand. I don't, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand why they don't look at the cause of the issue um, rather than just uh, the result, the reaction. I wish the FA would address all aspects of the, uh, 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 the issue. Yes, the Chelsea players did kick a fuss. They were angry. They were... Maybe out of line, maybe, but you need to look at the cause of that. What caused that? Address that as well. So you you want uh, you want to I mean uh, you want to punish uh, Chelsea Football Club? Okay, go ahead, punish, punish us. But look at the causes. And I'll tell you something. Every time we get punished, we come back better and stronger. Yeah. We come back better and stronger, and the uh, transfer ban is a testimony. To that, I know Boogeyman is, is eager to, to come in, so I'm gonna um, let him uh, have a couple of minutes. Boogeyman, um, what does he wanna you wanna say? Uh, yeah, I didn't hear about uh, uh, Chelsea getting uh, charged check, or any. Check, check my Twitter, man. I, I check my tweets. Um, okay. I'm actually giving giving a breakdown of it. Yeah, I, I mean the answer is yes. Uh, the referee uh, has. The referee has impacted that the result of that game. I don't know why someone will say that's my dishwasher. Uh, I don't know why someone will say something different. We even if I ten against eleven, as much as I know Liverpool, as much as I know Liverpool is the better team. Like um, I know Chelsea, Chelsea uh, underdog. I say that many times, but I think even at ten against 11, Salah, Mane, and uh, uh, Jota just haven't really done too much. Uh, the, the change that took away by putting Thiago Silva in the middle and moving Christensen in the right is just so smart. I'm, I didn't thought about it. And the that you see the way Thiago Silva like, coming, uh, coming in, making all those vertical passes. Uh, slowing down Liverpool attack most of the time. And Thiago Silva is a baller. He can control the ball, look around and pass the ball. So it just helped a lot. And listen, we have a, a team. We have a team. We can actually go all the way and win this league. It's just like someone said, uh, injuries. Um, Sometimes we tend to uh, 
tie game with a middle or uh, smaller team. That's something we need to just take our chances fast. If we had three or four chances in the first half, let's, even against Liverpool, this game, if we want to take all our chances, we'll be for nothing before that penalty come in. Exactly, for nothing. We have three clear chances, we just didn't take them. So for me, this team is something else. We can go as far as winning three competitions or even four competitions this season. Because we don't seem to get injured that much. Or even if our player get injured, it's never like three weeks, four weeks, or a month. It's just like a week and a half or something. It seems like we have a good medical staff also. So um, Liverpool game, the referee is to blame. I'll blame it uh, every day, every night, till I die. That, that, he did it. We should have won that game. Even at 10 against 11, we should have won it. If, mm. uh, uh, that Portuguese guy, um, no, Portuguese or Brazilian? Um, Fabino. Fabinho. If Fabinho Isn't got it? all his card, we should have been okay. But uh, he didn't even get anything to. So yeah. No, he, no, F- Fabinho was out of line. Fabinho was definitely he, out of line. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I mm. think the referee decide that game 100%. I agree. Absolutely. I, agree. I don't I agree. see anybody. But, 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 I disagree with one thing you said, though, uh, Boogeyman. Yeah. You said that Liverpool were the better team, or are the better team. Liverpool, in my opinion, they are not the better team when it comes to playing against Chelsea today. Today, because today, yeah. mm-hmm. the the, uh, the team that we have is uh, par, if not better. Um, I will I will let you, I will let you respond, but but uh, in a minute, in a minute. Listen, people. Um, uh, Bobby, are you still there, or are you, are you are you missing, Bobby? Yeah, Bobby's missing. Um, people, I am gonna put the link in the chat. I am gonna put the link in the chat, and um, anyone that jumps in, I will give you two minutes to give me your thoughts and opinions in respect to uh, Chelsea's challenge for the title. I will put the link in the chat, and I will give you two minutes to come on here. And tell us your thoughts and opinions about Chelsea's push for the title. Um, I know some uh, some of you were asking for the link uh, in the previous stream. Um, I will do it today. I will do it today. I will put the link in the chat. But I will not um, allow you to be on the panel. I will allow you to come on. Give us your thoughts. And then we will discuss uh, what it is that you've said. Uh, Kobe TV, big up to you. Big up to you. Thank you. For, for coming on. Uh, Jamie, you're not on the panel, mate. What's up? The link is in the chat. <laughs> the link is going to be in the chat. Um, Boogeyman, um, your chance to respond in regards to Liverpool are not stronger than Chelsea. Yeah. Hey, listen, the first, I think the first 22 minutes before, just before we score our goal, I think Liverpool were the better team. They have the possession. Like, I was... Looking at them, the so, so, boogeyman. But we we specifically talking about the game, or not yeah. in general. The game, not the game. My bad, my bad. I apologize. I thought you were talking about in general for, for the game. No, no, yeah, no. May, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. yeah. I, I was saying, even if Liverpool were the better team during the game, I feel like we should have won that game. Even the first half, we should have scored four goals. We should be four nothing. Because if mm. you look at the start, even the start, the first half. They have 60% of possession and we're still at 30 something or 40 something. So I remember the, tw- the first 20. But as soon as we scored that goal, that Liverpool just disappeared. Then we have we start having control over the game and pushing, 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 pushing. You can see it that that goal just push them down. That's what I'm saying. At the beginning of the game, Liverpool were the better team. But then we should have scored more goals. And the referee tend to help Liverpool by giving us. I mean, it is a red card. I think Kyle Critchick or Kasim say it is a red card, uh, or it is a penalty. Whether it is a red card is something else. Like I'm, let me put it clear: it is a penalty. But red card, I'm not sure. And uh, is it like a game as important as that. I think uh, the referee should take time and make sure that it is a red card. I mean, he didn't do that, and uh, I think I'm not going to say too much because I've heard a lot of other people have said a lot about it. So. I wanna. I want, I want to bring in Jamie. Jamie, uh, welcome to the stream. I know um, um, Ireland didn't do too well today. Uh, you can thank DJ Saf for that, but <laughs> welcome, to the, <laughs> welcome to the stream. 
How you doing, Thank my you. man? I'm a bit, a bit upset now, but I'm not going to lie. Like, yeah. No, the, 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 when they came to Ireland, the boys played good, so I can't really complain. Like, what can you expect from uh, players that play in the league? The for, league you know, they, they, they did well for their... Uh, they were very young as well, so I, I'm happy with the result overall. Like, they played well. So, I'm, I, I'm good, Mo. I'm good. How are you? <laughs> I'm I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, yeah, it's, uh, it's my second stream of the day. Um, oh so so it's, it's, it's been it's been interesting. It's been interesting. Um, yeah. Jamie, I wanna. Uh, I mean, you, uh, you've been in the chat. You've heard the uh, the conversation. I wanna get your thoughts on uh, Chelsea's challenge for the title this season. How realistic is this? Uh, are we are we actually gonna do it? Do you think we can do it? Um, are the uh, opposition too great? What is your, um, your your point of view in respect to that? I definitely think we can do it. Uh, when it comes to the team, I think the team, the boys are proven winners. We've seen that last season. You know, we've seen it last season with the Champions League. Uh, they're proven winners. Um, we brought in serious depth into the squad. Now, I'm a bit concerned about defence, but again, rid of Zuma and not getting a replacement for bench. Mm. That's yep. the one thing I'd be nervous of. But I think they're great to bring in uh, Saul. I think it was an unbelievable sign-in to get him in at the last few minutes because we needed that in midfield. Uh, Lukaku is going to be a game-changer for us. We already know that. Uh, so I believe we're up there to definitely give a really good challenge. The only teams I consider a threat other than ourselves would be Liverpool, City and even United with Ronaldo back. I, Ronaldo, he's 20, 36, but he scares me. Like, I, I, I have first-handed that today again. Like, you know, um, he scares me, like, to be honest with you. But um, they're the other three teams I think they'll fight. So I think it's going to be very close. But I definitely see us being a, a real threat this season. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I think, I think the way we started as well, the way we started the season, um, I, I have, I have, um, um, I want to say optimis optimism. I actually have confidence. Yeah. I think, I think we, you know, we have it within us to win it. And I think if we don't win it, it's because we have underachieved. It's not mm. like you know, it's it's a it's a tough task ahead of us, and okay. we have to fight for it. I think we, we have it. You know, we have the tools. Yeah. Um, you know, unless we see something unforeseen, like you know, um, a big injury to Lukaku, to, to, you know, to maybe Kante, yeah, uh, Kante, you know, yeah. something of that nature, then yeah, you know, um, then it's excusable. But apart from that, yeah. I think we, you know, we should be, we should be challenging. I think, um, I think, with the overall, the way I look at it is, last season we went a man down against Liverpool. And we lost. We couldn't keep the heads. We couldn't keep it. So I think it shows great character this season. The fact that we still went to man down, but this time we kept our heads. We got the we got the result at the end of the day. So I think that shows in itself that there's a difference between last last season's Chelsea squad and this season. That they're not playing around. They're going for it. That's why I think yeah. the, that's the big thing for me. Yeah, yeah, we're definitely yeah. still buoyed from having won the Champions League. You can feel that, like the squad depth. Yeah. Is only is only increased, and then we also have like more chemistry within the squad as well. This is the first preseason, full preseason with Tuchel as well, and you know that he had his own his own ideas and whatnot that he wanted to implement the squad that we didn't actually get to see. And I think that the early the, the couple of games that we played so far, we're seeing that you know that philosophy come to fruition, which is great to see. Definitely, definitely. Um, I wanna I wanna bring in uh, Nizayon, uh, Blue Class TV, Blue Clouds. Welcome to the stream. Thank you, thank you. Um, how are you all doing today? Good, how are you doing, brother? Good, good. Haven't yeah. have seen you for a while. Haven't seen you for a while. Um, um, I, I know you've been uh, busy on your channel, uh, nah. streaming and and, and 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 producing some great content on the uh, on the blue clouds. So um, big up to you. Big up to you, my man. Thank you. It's not just even the channel, man. It's it's school day. I mean, the kids are back to school, and it's crazy. Very very crazy. Too much work for me to do. Even I can't even create so much content like I used to. I have to give myself so many days in between to put something out there. But I want to say thank yeah. you all guys that uh, visited the stream a couple hours ago, you know. But yeah, uh, I want to chip in a little bit. I'm I'm off to the gym, getting late, but then I'll take the two-minute opportunity that you're giving me to express uh, my view on your you guys' subject you, you today. Can, you, can, you, can, you can have two minutes and 55 seconds. 
<laughs> thank you. Thank you. No, take it, take, you. take your time. Take your time, my man. Take your time. Okay. Take your time, my man. Okay. Uh, on the subject on uh, um, the referee putting up a statement about mm. the game, I think um, the whoever the Premier League management, whoever is in charge of the referee, is not going to put anything up there because Anthony Taylor is regarded as the number one top referee in the EPL right now. Putting any statement up there against uh, Rhys James, what he did trying to maybe apologize for that decision that bring the uh, reputation and then the uh, repetition that uh, the Premier League have for Anthony Taylor down because let's let's to be let's be honest to ourselves that decision that Anthony Taylor make was a bit harsh but I think if we, we have to put sympathy away and let's follow the rules what Rhys James did trying to prevent the ball from entering the pool it's really a red card. The sending off, it's a sending off uh, 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 um, decision, which I think Anthony Taylor don't need to even watch the video to see that. It was true, he touched the hand, and then you see the movement. Although he didn't, there wasn't, he didn't see the motion on the, v, uh, on the VAR screen, we all saw it on the screen that there was movement. I know we have our own problem with Anthony Taylor, but then, there's no reason why the referee committee or whatever should come up and put up any statement for uh, the sending off of Rhys James. Um, fair enough, but there is there's a couple of points. A couple of points. Um, the statement wasn't by the referee. The statement was by the FA, um, and it was because of the conduct of the players. Nothing to do. Nothing to do with Anthony Taylor. The uh, the issue is this. The issue is this. The decisions that he made. The decisions that he made were the catalyst to this. And I'm not talking about the sending off. And I'm not talking about the red card. Sorry, the, uh, uh, the penalty. Because the, um, uh, the penalty, in my opinion, it was a penalty. In my opinion, it was a penalty. The, what, what, um, what was the, the catalyst was the fact that he never gave the time to review it properly. That upset a lot of the uh, the fans and upset a lot of the players because he didn't give the, the, the revision of the incident in a time. He watched the still image. He did not watch the replay. Now, even that, you can put aside. You can put that aside and say there's no excuse for that, for, that for, for, the, for the behavior of the players, for that. You can put that aside. But then you go back and you look at Fabinho and the way that he played that match and the tackles that he made and the fouls that he made, some of which were dangerous. Not even a warning. Forget the yellow card. Forget the red card. Not even a warning. You had dissent from Mohamed Salah. Mohamed Salah dissented. He kicked the ball away. That is a bookable offence. So the uh, I mean th these are just some of the decisions that were made by Anthony Taylor that were uh, uh, biased, in my opinion. Um, when you take all that into account, uh, and, and again, I'm not excusing the players for the way they behaved. But I'm saying there was a reason for that, and they need to address the reason as well as the uh, the result. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you on that because I cannot, I didn't understand why Anthony Taylor gave uh, Mendy a yellow card when he was trying to kick the ball away when there was no one holding the ball. The ball was just on the on the floor, and then uh, he kicked the ball away and he received the yellow card. With that, I agree with you. You know, it's Anthony Taylor. Let's take it like that. Mm, yeah, it's not. It's I, not going to change. Before, before, uh, before, before, wait one second, uh, Couch. Uh, uh, before you go, uh, Nee, I want your opinion on the uh, uh, the chances of Chelsea Football Club in attaining or achieving success in winning the title this season. Um, how likely is that uh, uh, is that outcome? And do you think we have a squad big enough to do that? I'm sure we do, uh, 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 Buggy. I'm sure we do. We have all the minerals, all the uh, uh, um, equipment to be able to secure that title. To the, um, this is what uh, our coach said when he got the job. He said he's creating a, uh, he's creating a team that no one wants to play with. Already, uh, lots of Premier League teams and teams around the world don't want to play Chelsea. They don't want to play Chelsea. It is there. If you look at Pandit, just like what Boogeyman said earlier on, all the pundits are said Chelsea looks so scary and they look so dangerous. What we have to learn, what we have to uh, improve on is our final third and our finishing. That is all. We have everything. Yeah. 
and I know that will come with time. More time, the more uh, um, uh, what's his name, Lukaku plays with the team, they will understand his movement, so the movement, and he also understand Kai Havertz, Mason Mount movement, and then things will get better for us. Don't worry about Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo. Don't worry, he's he's just doing what he's doing. I'm not scared of Cristiano Ronaldo. I'm still scared of Manchester City. City us. Look how they open Manchester. I mean Arsenal up. Look at how they open up and score goals. We couldn't do that. We only scored two goals. We wasted many chances. Ronaldo is not a threat. No, he's not a threat to me. <laughs> I don't think so. He's he's a threat. He's a threat he's a when threat. he's playing. He's uh, uh he's playing with uh, Portugal, and I understand. But he's coming to he's coming to face terrible defenders in the EPL, low block, and all that kind of stuff. He doesn't. He hasn't meet those teams in a while. To be fair, Arsenal only had 10 men as well, though. True. See, so... Yeah, so we have to just uh, uh, learn how to open up and then do our finishing and we'll be fine. City are still dangerous. They will open up. Uh, I, fantastic. Can I just go back yeah. to one topic, one comment that we made about the refereeing? I, it just, it's yeah, been yeah. sticking out in my head for minutes now. Like, um... Wasn't there a rule that came out a couple of years ago where double jeopardy wasn't supposed to come in? So, like, if you get a red card offense and it leads to a penalty, they won't send you off. Am I right in that? Like, because I remember that being a rule uh, maybe two or three years ago where if somebody, say, for instance, the goalie uh, brings down a player in, in, in the box and it's a penalty. But you can't send off. Guys, a... I'm sorry. Uh, uh, couch, couch, I'm sorry. No, for worries, you no worries. I gotta hit. The, I gotta hit the gym, guys. Uh, I'll Take see you guys care. later. Boogie thanks, man. Thanks for jumping. Thank you. Thanks thank you. 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 Thank yeah, no, I was just under the impression that that was a rule in the Premier League where yeah. you, there's double jeopardy, where <laughs> if you have a red card offence, it's yeah. either it's a penalty or it's a red card. It's never it's never both. But and it seemed like that. that. I've not come across that. To be fair, I'm I feel... Sure. In I, fact, I, I, that I, is heard, a rule. I heard I think, ESPN uh, pundits discuss something like that. They say a double punishment. Um, I think it, it is... Uh, sorry, it is... Uh, uh, the penalty when you when you hand the ball with your hand in the penalty box, or, or when the ball is going to the net and you prevent the ball to go inside, it is a red card offense. So it has nothing to do with the fact that it is penalty, but it is a red card offense. So the, I think the rule, as a cow's critic is saying, uh, probably if someone, I don't know, I think the rule that hasn't changed. It is because I heard them discuss it and they say. That's how the rule is. The way Anthony Taylor uh, applied last time, that's exactly how the rule is actual. But the yeah, a lot of yeah, are the rule can be changed. The, so, the the decision, the decision was a correct one for the offense. The decision was a correct one for the offense. Mm -hmm. Um and I and in my opinion, had Anthony Taylor looked at that even in a replay, the fact uh, that his the motion of his arm was towards the ball. I mean, you know, the ball did hit hit his leg before it hit his arm, so it was a ricochet. But even that, the, the way that he moved his body towards the ball, I think, uh, even had he watched the replay properly, he would have still come up with the same decision. The only the only difference is it would have been the fact that he watched it, he gave it time, and I think that is what a lot of people are uh, are upset about the, the fact that he didn't give it time. Had he have just spent a couple of seconds doing that, it would have been a different you know a, a, a different reaction. To be fair, I just I, looked it up. I just looked it up. So it, it, it is double jeopardy as if there's uh, an attempt to make, uh, what is it, the exact words. If it's accidental, then they'll give you a yellow card and you'll, it's a penalty. But if they deem it to be intentional, then it's a red card. So how does he How does he look at like a still, a still screen right there and, and determine intent at that point? Like that's the problem I have. No, it's, the not problem about, it's not exactly, about like exactly. he, he, he went there to the monitor to examine what happened. And then discern that the 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 foul was uh, not accidental and on purpose. He looked at a still and said that it was on purpose. That's a completely so, so, different thing. So couch, that makes couch. No sense. It, it, it yeah. actually says it actually says if it's accidental, it's a yellow if card offense. Uh, if it, uh, however, okay, accidental challenges rules it's a yellow card, and if it's yeah. an intentional foul, it's a double jeopardy and you get a red card and a, and a penalty. 
I, I just feel that there's so much inconsistency with refereeing in the Premier League at the moment as there is. Like, that's the only reason why we're getting confused is because some referees wouldn't have sent him off at all, but some referees would. Some of the refs don't even know what they don't even know, know the full rules of the game themselves because it's changed so much in the last few years. So I just feel that's the only reason why we're getting confused. I feel it was a red card. We can, I, I, can, I, I can't deny it anymore. It was a red card. It was just unfortunate. And I feel it was very unprofessional the way he went over to the, the, the screen and looked at it and didn't see a replay. He just looked at the still image. That was unprofessional. But I just feel that it was a red card. But there's just too much inconsistencies with the referees nowadays. That's why we just get confused. You know, what, what, what my issue with people saying, I feel... So I cannot really say anything else. Because for me, to be honest with you, the fact that the ball ricochet over James' tie should take the intention out of the equation. It's not intentional anymore because there is not enough time because let's say, for example, uh, if anybody saw uh, Luis Suarez uh, preventing Ghana to score goal at the World Cup or something. Of it course, so, yes. It is so obvious. Like the ball is just going inside, and the guy just jumped with his his hand and just stopped mm. the ball going inside. That is a red car, and you get a, you get out. So, but that ball that hit James tight, and we're talking about what one the second or flash fraction of second. So whatever, like even the ball hit me, I will always try to move my body in a way to prevent. Whether my hand goes in or not, and the intention side of that law is just difficult to prove in James' car. Uh, James, sorry, in James' case, so I'm thinking again, it is a penalty. The ball hit his hand, but the red car is yeah. just something nobody can prove. The intention part. So when you cannot prove something. Then do you give a chance to the fact that that person you cannot prove someone? Uh, 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 see, okay, yeah, but if if uh, bogeyman, if he give a penalty for uh, touching his hand, he's got to give a red card. No, it doesn't. No, uh, but the, uh, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is, if you look at the video, no, Lee James lifted his arm like that. He looks yeah. intentionally. That's why he gave the right cast. It's the movement. It's the movement that made yeah, it the movement. Like That's what happened. happened. Well, the yeah, issue but... is he, he never saw the movement. He never he never yeah. saw the yeah. foul. He never yeah. saw the foul because he he never blew his whistle until the uh, yeah. fourth official told him. He never yeah. saw a foul. Okay, so he never saw a foul. Then, then you know he goes on and looks at the monitor and sees a still image, and he gives a penalty <coughs> and a red card from a still image. That <laughs> is a problem. Do you, oh, do you no. know what more? I do you know what more? I agree with you about you know the penalty and red card. I had no doubt about that. But what I didn't like about the referee, he didn't spend a spend a long a long time from the monitor to study it properly. He just stood there for two three seconds, and that's why be, that's why the and just give the decision, and that's why uh, yeah, Chelsea so fan is not happy about it. Cannot prove the intention, but we can't know. He can't. But but the referee had a mayor. We it was like he, he was terrible. He was absolutely terrible. If you look at the statistics, Liverpool had 14 fouls. We had three fouls that whole game. They had 14 and not one yellow card. Like that's just that that in itself proves everything to me that the referee was shocking. Now I still think it was a red card, but it was unprofessional from what the way he looked at that whole situation. He didn't look at the, the replay, he looked at the still image. If you looked at the full replay, I think you still would have given a red card, but it's just an unprofessional. It's just unprofessional. I doubt, I doubt it. I, I don't know it. because it's just the arm movement for me. If it, I know it hits his tight and it hits his hand, but it's just that initial kind of flinch. And I know he doesn't mean to do it, but it's still it, it, they can't prove that he didn't mean to do it, so they have to give it. Yeah, but but I still doubt it because when you are on the goal line, your first reflex is to make yourself big. Whether you move your arm or not, you want to make yourself big. And the ball hit her tie, his tie. So what do you want him to do? He has to make himself big. And that's what he's trying to do. So yeah. my point is this. Intention is not there. I mean, it has to be proven. But if yeah. there is a, something in the law, say, when there is a doubt, if you cannot prove something beyond reasonable doubt, then it's not, if you cannot prove something, you cannot... Uh, 
applied the law at that time. That was well, well, he had no right to make that decision because he didn't look at the replay. He had no right to make that decision. Exactly. 100%, no right. Anyways, yeah. 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 So we can agree. We can all agree now. <laughs> can, can I just um, say something more? Um, one second. Regard... One second. One second. Couch, uh, uh, you, you have to go, my man. Couch, are you there? Couch, because I, I think Couch might have left. Uh, Boogeyman, uh, sorry, Bobby, are you still there? Bob, uh, Bobby, can you hear us? Okay, we, we've lost Bobby and we've lost Couch. Because um, I just received a message from Couch. One second, lads. No problem. Um, go on, Kasim. Go on. Go ahead. Yeah, um, go back to Chelsea. You know that uh, t uh, title challenge? When I was watching Liverpool game, I predicted 1-1. One, one, but I wasn't, even when with Tim Mann, I, I knew they won't score. And for the first time, I saw Mo Salah kicking the ball. That was saying it all. How he's getting frustrated with Chelsea. That's how 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 I I think I never saw Salah losing losing his head like that. Never. He's, he's usually calm guy, you know. Uh, and I was just saying watching the game, and I knew Liverpool would, would score. So that was saying how Chelsea this year becoming just different team with different mentality with different uh, you know I think too I don't think he cares about the Champions League now because he won it he just won that league I think he's gonna go for the league that's my opinion alright uh, one second Bobby are you back Bobby yes Bobby, can you yes hear me? I am I am yeah what, what, yeah. what happened there, man? What happened? He, he vanished. I, I, I don't know. I, I, I froze, then I lost um, uh, volume. I don't know. But uh, I'm back now. I had to just log out and log back in again. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Lads, I want, I, want, I want to go back. I want to go back to this, uh, uh, the title of the video. We, uh, we're focusing on a game that we've reviewed over and over again and a decision that we've talked about many times. Anthony Taylor is not going to change his ways, man. He is not going to change his ways. This, this is the way he's been since Jose Mourinho's days. I mean, you know, I've seen, I've seen videos of Jose Mourinho when he was managing Chelsea and how, you know, how much love he has for Anthony Taylor and how much Anthony Taylor has love for us. Conversation that we'll have again in the future, I'm positive of it. Positive of it. The issue is, the issue is, Saul Neguez, Mamoulou Lukaku, Chelsea, are we strong enough to win the title? We've talked about Man City, we've talked about Liverpool, we've talked about United, we've talked about Ronaldo, we've talked about, what's his name, uh, Grealish and, and whatnot. Chelsea, with the squad we have today, can we win? And I want to add a caveat. Should we get a couple of injuries? Because we're talking about squad depth. Right now, we can get a, an injury or two. In midfield, we'll be all right. As long as they're not serious long-term injuries, if they're like a few weeks, we'll be, all, we'll be all right. But in attack and in defense, if we get a couple of serious injuries, is that going to destroy our chances of winning the title? Are we going to be uh, in the same situation that Liverpool were when Van Dijk got knocked out for the season. I want you guys to address that. And I'm going to start with, uh, with Bobby because he's been away for, for a little bit. So, Bobby, can you kick us off on that? Sure. Um, yeah, there's, there's quite a few things I wanted to sort of add. Uh, I'll try and rush them through while I answer this, if that's okay, Mo. Um, I, well, this is the thing with Chelsea. Um, we are always underspent in the player area. We're one team that's really strange, especially our fans. Our fans struggle to understand that modern football in terms of club success is a squad game. And your strength in depth as a squad often dictates how far you go um, in terms of winning the honours. 
And right now, you've just hit the nail on the head. You know, I, I, I really, this is something I've tried to avoid saying for, for a little while now. But you're right. One, one injury doesn't even have to be a long-term injury. An injury to, or a suspension, let's not even go down injuries uh, way, or, or whatever, to, to one of our uh, forwards. I'm talking of Lukaku. And where does that leave us? You know, I'm talking of, you know, even the midfield. <laughs> We've got Saul, yes, brilliant. But um, look what happened against Liverpool. We lost two players in one fell swoop. And, you know, we're still just a little bit thin. Now, having said that, I know it's difficult to fulfill a squad completely because, you know, there's, there's that issues of keeping players happy, giving them enough uh, game time to some some extent and so on but I maintain that I think that Chelsea who are in five competitions right I think you know the the the, the proof is in what Marina said you know all these people coming out saying oh I don't think Tuchel cares about this he get or cares about that he's focused on the Premier League I can 100% tell you that Tuchel is focused on every competition because that's the demand on him. Marina put it down to a T where she said, look, so, uh, Saul has come in. We're now a complete team ready to fight in all five competitions. So we want the World Club Cup this year. Don't ever, you know, don't don't think that's not a, a focus. That is 100% a focus. Retaining the Champions League, 100% a focus. The Premier League, 100% a focus. And then all these cups that 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 we missed out on uh, over the years, the FA Cup, the League Cup. It's going to be a a, a really grueling season for Chelsea because of the standards we've set for ourselves. So, yeah, are we fully equipped as a squad? We are better equipped than we have been, uh, but we're slightly vulnerable. Of course we are. Can we do anything about it? Well, we can't now anyway. Um, you know, will we get through the season? Will we succeed? I hope so. I think we've got the manager. I think we've got the know-how, and I think we're right up there. Can I just finally say one last thing before I let others talk, uh, Mo? Mm. Um, I, the only concern I have with Chelsea is something that Man United are very, very good at. And now they've got someone like Cristiano Ronaldo, who is a goal-scoring machine and a player that carries teams. He's used to it. You watch how he carries the Portuguese national team. You know, he, he is that team. <laughs> and I can imagine him doing the same with Man United. You see, what Man United do so well, and um, uh, Man City have recently been doing well, is they stockpile points by beating the lower teams. There's no point beating Man United in the Premier League and then going and losing to Villa or Brighton. Or, you know, all re with all respect to all these teams, Villa, Brighton, Brentford, you know, this is Chelsea's Ac Achilles heel. They fluff their lines with the lower teams where people like United and City thrash them and collect points, collect goal difference and all sorts of things. If we get that right this season, then, you know, hand on heart, and I can say we're winning the league. But if we keep that Chelsea way of only focusing on the big games and, um, you know, not taking these, for want of a better word, little games seriously, uh, it could be a bumpy ride. Boogie, uh, Bobby, you've uh, you pointed us in a direction that I want to I wanna look at. Are we actually a stronger squad this season? 
Are we actually a stronger squad this season? Because, yes, we have Saul, and yes, we have Lukaku. But we've lost a lot of players, though. We've lost a lot of players. And the players that we've lost were squad players. You see, Tammy Abraham and Olivier Giroud gave us a different option in attack. Yeah. Zuma. Zuma in defence. Yeah. Um, Billy Gilmore. I mean, Billy Gilmore has been compensated with, with Saul. So that I'm, I'm content with. But we have changed our style of play. We are now a five at the back system. But we haven't really brought in anyone for Tuchel to emphasize that five in the back system. We were going to do that with Kunde. We were going to do that with Kunde, but that never happened. Um, Chaloba, is he, will he? We'll have to wait and see. Lukaku now is our only striker. Very good striker, in my opinion. I know some of you disagree. But he's our only striker. And that, for me, is a problem. Yes, Timo Werner can do a job. Yes, Kai Havertz can do a job. But they are not strikers. In the past, we've had a couple of strikers. So are we really a stronger squad? With, I mean, yesterday we were talking about the transfer market. We were talking about the streamlining of the, of the squad and whatnot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think Marina has done... Let's not use Marina. Chelsea has done a good... <laughs> I know you guys are laughing. People in the stream, if you don't know what we're talking about, you need to go watch yesterday's stream. <laughs> because <laughs> because you know, we don't want to put all the, uh, all the emphasis on the certain iron lady. <laughs> Chelsea have done... <laughs> Chelsea have done Chelsea have done wonders in streamlining the squad, in in selling some players and bringing in some players. But really, have we done the right thing for our squad in regards to challenging on all five fronts? Marina Gavaskaya said we are challenging on five fronts. I'm gonna bring in Boogeyman, and then uh, after Boogeyman's statement, we're gonna have it open so everyone can jump in. Boogeyman, let me know what your thoughts are on this. Hey, we said um, the, even from last year we need some reinforcement. We need a quality player. We don't want to sign that wood because we have enough that wood in the team. Uh, so, like you said, we lost Giro. We lost uh, Tammy Abraham. I don't know how much those people are bringing in the training ground. Probably a lot, but they. Uh, Thomas Choco said Giru is a good professional and a team player and a pretty focused on the training. So he's gone. Tommy is gone. And we got Lukaku. Uh, I'm content with that because uh, the only thing I don't know is an unknown for me. I don't know uh, how Giru challenge our defender in the training ground. If someone else will do the same thing, um, I, I don't think it even matters. So for the our attack, I don't think I have too much problem. I think that uh, section of the team is still good. The midfield, like we all probably, the majority on this panel will say this, because the game has changed. Um, it's not always about uh, dribbling, passing the ball, control, but it's become a little physical. We're going to get kicked we're going to get pushed. We're going to get tackled. We probably have one of the best midfield where we pass the ball around, dominate, keep possession. And those uh, players like Jorginho, even Kovacic, uh, they like space. They like to move the ball. They're not going to have a distance, but they're going to be kicked and all those things. So we know for sure we need uh, add on that. And then we have uh, uh, Saul. Uh, is that Saul? Yeah, Saul Niguez, right? Mm. Saul Niguez. So I think it helps. Now, when we come to the defense, again, people think to say uh, Zuma is clumsy, but the rule has changed. It seems like we are uh, allow uh, the FA has decided to allow clumsiness because they say they're not going to call all the penalty anyway. So normally, I think. The league is now uh, uh, allow uh, 
physical defender to play just the way they want to play. But that's the time where Chelsea has decided to let Zuma go. That's my only biggest problem. Ex because excellent point. Excellent point. Because we need strong players and we, we've let away, we've sent away one of our strongest players. Yeah, but at, at the same time, that's what the league is. The league tends to go to that direction. They want more physical, they want more pushing around. Then we try to be the Brazilian of the the EPL, which hmm. we can still win the league doing that. But the, we need people that can go after the, the other team players also. And then those people are just Zuma. Rudiger cannot do all. Christensen is not that type of player. I don't think um, uh, um, the 32-year-old Brazilian, uh, Thiago Silva, is not that type of player. Maybe Rhys James? I'm not sure. So I don't want to see Boogie us being, getting bullied all the time. That's Boogie my man. biggest issue. Yeah. Name, name me our defenders. Tell me who are defenders. Hey, uh, Alonso, win back. I count, I count them as defenders. No, 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 no. Centre back, centre back, centre backs. Oh, Rudiger, Rudiger uh, Christensen, Thiago Rudiger, Silva, Aspi. As Rudiger, Chalaba. Aspi, Christensen, Thiago, and then Chalaba. maybe I will add uh, Chaloba in it. Fine. I'd also, I'd also put Malang Saar there as well because he's still at the football club. Ma he may listen. come in. Oh, Maling, yeah, so we got Maling Saw. We got uh, I think Sterling is still there, or Sterling, Sterling gone? No, he's gone to Black. I think he went to Blackpool. I think. So, so we got Maling Saw. We got Maling Saw. In my opinion, Maling Saw is not uh, Chelsea level yet. I mean, we saw him in preseason. Oh. We saw him in Porto. He's not yeah. really. Okay, I'll so Zuma, I'll squad, squad depth. I'm talking about Malang, squad depth. Squad depth is what I mean. there. Yeah, squad depth is there. Um, I am. I am worried. I am worried. I have a feeling. I have a feeling. If we are unable to, uh, or if we do get a couple of injuries, we're, you know, we're switching back to the four uh, four back system, two man centre back system. I have a feeling we might have to go. Uh, down yeah, that be, path. The problem with that is we don't have left back. We don't have right back in the team. Who, Alonso is not, and I don't think um, a Chiwa is good enough left back. I don't think so. I mean, Chilwell, Chilwell, is not, Chilwell is not good enough left back. I don't think. So. I think he he is a no, wing back. Man. No, no, no. Uh, no. Chil Chil Chilwell as a left back, I think he's one of the best. As a left wing back, I think you know he he, he may be struggling. Vis James as a right back, I think is fantastic. As a right wing back, I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant. Um, I wanna I wanna bring in uh, Julius and then then we'll, we'll, we'll open it to uh, um, to the uh, to the panel. Julius, welcome to the stream. How you doing? Good. How are you guys? Good. We're good. My man Julius. Okay, man. Julius. Good, how you doing? Welcome. Big up, big up to you all. Julius, is the Chelsea is is the Chelsea squad big enough? Is the Chelsea squad deep enough to win the uh, the Premier League this season? Um, <laughs> that caught me off guard. <clears throat> I think it is good enough, to be honest. Um, I know, I've, I've seen actually Sam Allardyce today saying that he's, he thinks that Salim Zuma is going to cost us the Premier League because of the, if we get a couple of injuries, basically he doesn't think we will be able to have enough to cover. But I personally disagree because I think we, we won't get much injuries uh, specifically when it comes to Rudiger and Aspilicueta, don't these two they don't they don't get in, injured that much. Uh, the other thing is I've seen Reese James last year a couple of times play center back at the end of the season and he was very good and reliable. And I actually do believe Thomas Tuchel do, does see him as a center back as well. Hence why we we were trying to get Hakim if you remember, right? So. Also, don't don't forget Shaloba, who's been unbelievable this season. You never know; this guy could turn out to be a world class centre back if he becomes regular. Who knows? Julius, let me interrupt you for one second. Let me interrupt you for one second. I understand all the hype. I understand all the talk. I understand all this building up of Trevor Shaloba. I understand that Trevor Shaloba has shown uh, a lot, a lot, and a lot of grit determination, drive to succeed. And he has shown skill and he has shown ability on the pitch. No doubt. No doubt. 
Someone else, is, someone else did that. Someone else did that under Lampard and for bits under Tuchel. And he was sent out alone. Billy Gilmore. Similar situation. Similar uh, um, development stage in his career. Maybe he, maybe Gilmore is actually a little bit more advanced than Chalaba. Because uh, he, he was given um, a chance to play under, um, under harder circumstances. We haven't really seen Chalaba tested yet. We've seen him pre-season. We've seen him Super Cup and we've seen him one game in the Premier League. Are we right? Are we putting too much um, of hope, of reliability, of ambition on Chalaba? Are we putting too many eggs in that basket? Is what I'm saying. Let um, me know, Julius. Um, my, for, for me, this is where I disagree. Uh, you have a very valid point, but. Based on how we play in our, our defensive system, I don't think individual uh, skill set when it comes to defense is, a, is the only factor on why we are successful in, on, uh, defensively. Is because at the back, if someone gets, is, is for example, someone is man marking someone or is dragged by an offensive player from the opposition side, the way we are set up is there is always going to be someone covering for it. So in my opinion, in terms of individuals, nobody would have thought Rudiger or even Aspilicueta perform at that level that they did, specifically uh, when Tuchel came in. So I, I really think the way Tuchel uh, plays even if you put Chaloba there, he's going to thrive because he's always going to have someone covering him. We play compact at the back and we have the, the protection of our two pivot midfielders. So I, I really believe we are, we are a very well-rounded team and very versatile. All right. All right. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to open it to, uh, to everyone. Mo, can, before, before, Mo, can I, think, I wait, ask you a question? Think... Wait. Wait, 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 wait. One second, one second, one second. Okay. One second. Listen, people in the chat, people in the chat, I have linked, I have linked the panel for you. If you guys want to jump in, the link is there in the chat. Click on it and jump in. All right, a, lot, a lot of you were, were telling me yesterday that you want to get the opportunity to come on the panel and talk. Well, this is the opportunity. The link is there. Click on it. I'll give you two minutes each. Anybody that wants to jump in, I'll give you two minutes to come on and let me know your thoughts and opinions. So the link is in the chat. Um, I think, Boogie Man, yeah. uh, sorry, Bobby and, and Kasim. Um, let me see, who should I go for? Hi, right, guys in the chat, who should I talk? <laughs> Kasim or, or Bobby? <laughs> no, I'll, 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 okay, I'll go, go Kasim. No, nah, go, go, go Bobby. Go Bobby first. Go, go Kasim. It's all good. <laughs> and I just want to ask you a question, guys. You, do you think it's Chelsea? Because I was thinking about that question all afternoon. I, I went to work. I just finished work an hour ago. Did Chelsea make a mistake not signing Jules Conde? Possibly. No. 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 I'll tell you what. I, it, not, I know, not the price. No, no, no. no, no. Money is not an no, option. No, it's not an no, option. For it was because the Chelsea price. made a lot of money. They didn't spend not any the money. Price. Not the price. I, I don't care. I don't care about the price. I don't care about the price. The price. Yes, See, I agree with you more. The process. The process. Yeah. The process. Yeah. We, we talked about this yesterday. Uh, for the people in the chat who, who missed it, um, we don't have a problem with the price. Had we agreed with uh, Sevilla for... The um, the buyout the buyout clause. Had we have come to an eighty million euro agreement to get Kunde and gone through with that, it's fine. The fact of the matter is, they agreed on a fifty five million euro deal, and then they upped that price. Chelsea had a gentleman's agreement with Sevilla for fifty five million euros. Okay. The fact that they upped that price, I don't care who it is. We don't deal that way. We don't we don't play like that. If you if we if we if we buckle if we bow down to one such deal then that's it we're done for we're done for and and, and we've seen it with Manchester United we've seen it with, with, with other clubs they have to buy the full price they, there's no negotiating when, when when they had to buy Sancho they you know Dortmund wouldn't sell him last season and Dortmund sold him this season for the price that they wanted not what Manchester United wanted and it's all because of the uh, Maguire uh, deal in the uh, in the past. Chelsea don't, don't play like that. Uh, sorry, mm. Bobby, uh, I'll let you come in. 
Sure, I was going to, I've just noticed Kunde was sent off today <laughs> um, mm. for France. Uh, look, uh, the truth yeah, that was matter, really sad. You look at his face; he was really troubled by them. And that, the, that, well, he, he was. It was a silly tackle. But yeah, anyway, yeah. that's a, the the okay. truth of the matter is we are short. We are short. Um, how do you provide backup for a player of the quality of Rudiger? Because you see, we we've been spoiled by his performance. Rudiger's performance towards the end of last season is, I think, part of the main reasons our defence looks so solid. We shouldn't underestimate what he brings to that Hello? to that defence. And uh, should he go missing in some games, it's a problem. Um, our strike force, you know, where now. Uh, we've now created a situation where we have a striker. But is a striker enough? I don't think so. I think we should have kept at least another backup striker uh, for uh, Lukaku, who's going to need rest at some point or might be suspended or might have a few niggles here and there. I think as far as our strength in depth is concerned, we've been a little bit short-sighted and a little bit too swayed by this word, game time. That's, it, it, it's such a nonsense. Oh, he needs game time. No, he doesn't. He plays for Chelsea Football Club. He plays when the club needs him to play. That is professional top-class football. When The club is not there to cater for a player to play game in, game out, get injured, get knackered, and then leave the, the club to, to flounder in their absence. That's not what this is about. But a lot of people tend to not see that. They see the player. And whereas the player is important, the player is not the club. So do we have enough? Not quite. Please, God, let us not have injuries and things like that. But, you know, anything can happen in football. That's why you need squad depth. That's why you have uh, teams like uh, uh, Real Madrid, Barcelona, they pad themselves out. They pad them. Even Man City is padded out with players. They have players in the stands. Same as Man United. This is why. So as to be able to have that depth. We have it to a certain extent. But, you know, in a long season like this, back-to-back -back games, international games in between, I have some concerns. Question. Question. Chelsea don't like buying players in January because the January transfer window is normally a uh, an overpriced window. Are we going to be forced to make some players in to buy some players in January? I know Brian is talking about Chelsea going in for Kunde in January. I I uh, sorry not, not where wasn't it where is it where is it where is it where is it, where is it? Uh, yeah. Chelsea are going in uh, are linked to, to go back in for Kundi in January the thing is this I don't mind going for him in January I, you know I, I, I would have liked to have had him now as a player but I think um, the price and the negotiating between us and Sevilla needs to be done properly needs to be done properly I want to bring in DJ Sav DJ Sav uh, yeah. you follow transfer markets quite intensely you uh, you, you follow developments do you get the uh, the sense that we haven't done enough business in regards to players coming in this window, and we may be, in your opinion, I want to know in your opinion, do you think yeah. we might be overpaying for someone come mm. January? Um, for me, I think I think when the start of the transfer window began, I think what the main objective was, and I think we discussed this yesterday, was um, I think they only wanted to get the positions they needed to fill up and get mainly get rid of players. That's what the main thing was. And obviously Lukaku was the attacking striker that we needed. Obviously, um, Sal Nigaz is now the midfielder that we wanted. And Kunde was the defender that we wanted. I think they were, and obviously the, the, goal, the goalkeeper that we brought in as well, uh, Benatelli from, uh, I think it was from Middlesbrough. I think they were the main players I think that we were looking at. And I think the main point was to literally get rid of the rest, uh, get just get rid of players that we don't need in the squad. Um, but I still agree. I still think we are slightly short. I think we could have got Kunde in as well. Personally, I think it'd have been a, I think it'd have been an excellent buy should he have come in. Um, I think we'd have been basically complete. But I'll go back to what Craig said in the comments. I do believe Chelsea are probably going to go back in for Kunde in January. I don't know what the price is going to be. 
Um, I have understand they, they they may go up um, going for him again, but then what we've got to be careful of now is that if Real Madrid end up getting Mbappe um, in the summer, it's more than likely they're going to probably go in for Kunde as well. I've heard about that as well that they may go in for him as well. So this is the only thing that's concerning me about the Kunde deal. Um, but I still think that something can be done in January. Yes, January is a bad time to buy a place because it's literally prices are hacked up. You know, you know, you know, you know, these clubs are just going to put, they're going to double the price or triple the price of their players. So, yeah, for me, if we can bring anybody in, I mean, as I said, if Kunde can come in, January, if he's the only missing piece that we need, then yeah, I should think, I hope we can go all, go out all and get him. And for what I understand, for what I've heard from various uh, things that I've read in, um, read in um, all the transfer business and hearing from various people that are saying Kunde is possibly a, tra- a target for us in January. So that could possibly be the move that we make. Um, so yeah, uh, it won't surprise me if he ends up at the football club in January. S- something, something uh, small, is small, but it's also big in regards to our season. Is this? Kante did not join the French team. Kante did not join the French team because of his ankle injury. Now, that injury must be severe or serious enough for him to not join the international squad. Because you, you know with international squads, players who have niggles, they still join. Because uh, they, they want to be around the national team. They may not play, you know, but, but they will be there. They'll, they'll be training. They'll be taking part in the... Um, uh, they'll be part of that environment. The fact that Kante didn't go, the fact that Kante wasn't selected and um, Deschamps picked someone... Someone else, I think he got Amrabat from Juventus. Is it, is it from Juventus, Amrabat? Not Amrabat, sorry. Uh, Rabio, Rabio, Amrabat. I'm thinking about the, the Moroccan. Rabio. So he, he got Rabio. Now, this injury to, to Kante, how severe is it really? Because if Kante has a niggle at his age, that's going to continue all season. We're going to have to do what we did two seasons ago with Kante. Play him one game, rest him for one or two games. We can't afford to do that. If we are looking, if we are looking to have a successful season in all these different competitions that we're in, we can't afford to have Kante missing. Could we, will we see some change um, in regards to the way we play? Because I think um, we're going to have to see, you know, the Jorginho Kovacic partnership being reignited here. What do you guys think? I, I just I have a few things to say when it, the whole regards of squad depth and everything like that as well. Go on, Jamie. Go on. Um, I think Chelsea made a few mistakes this this um this transfer window. I think the one mistake we had was letting Drew go. I don't think we should have got rid of Drew. Now I know a lot of people say Tammy Abraham. Tammy Abraham didn't want to stay on the bench. He didn't. He wouldn't have started over Lukaku. And, he didn't and want to need, also, need to be also, also, mm. also, also, Tammy Abraham, Tammy Abraham's contract was running down and yeah. he wasn't prepared to sign an extension. So yeah. we had to get monies for the man. Well, yeah, but that's fair. If Drew didn't want to stay, that's fair. But we needed that second striker that'd be able to come off the bench and make an impact. Secondly, we shouldn't have sold Zuma until we knew that Kunde was Agreed. done. Absolutely. Absolutely. Should, Absolutely. Should not have left the club. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Listen. Yeah. It, it, sorry, Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy. Sorry, Jimmy. Continue. Yeah. Um, but there's one player that really upsets me that he's not a Chelsea player anymore. And that's Tamori. I, I think he was a talent. I, I think he should have never, never sold, been sold. I think he's an unbelievable talent. I think if we had him this season, I don't think we might, we would mind even be talking about Tamori or Kunde. Sorry. Kunde. Yeah, Kunde, I don't yeah. think we would mind be even talking about Kunde. I think mm. Tamori has so much potential. I think he's a brilliant centre-back. I was so upset when I heard he left. So upset. Um, but no, Kante should... Uh, not Kante, my head's gone. Um, Zuma should not have been sold until... Kunde was literally flying to London to sign a contract with Chelsea, hundred percent. Yeah, I wanna, I wanna, uh, guys, give me a second. Um, I wanna address some of the, some of these comments. Um, it's not Kashim, it's Kasim. Uh, there's no H. Um, I think we have a lot of players that can link up with Lukaku. 
a lot of players, Ziyech, Timo Werner, Havertz, Mount, uh, Pulisic, uh, Callum. There's a ton of players that can link with Lukaku. We are not going to have a problem in respect to that. I, uh, um, I know Lukaku plays good with uh, support like he did with Latoro Martinez and, and with Eshaf Hakimi in the past. But I don't think we will we'll have a problem with him in uh, in Chelsea squad. We have more talent. In fact, we have more players that can support Lukaku than he had with Inter Milan. Um, I think uh, what we can provide is um, more in regards to creating chances for Lukaku to score. Um, I have a um, a member of the chat who has joined us on the uh, on the panel. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to introduce yourself and give us your, your, your opinion. Nairobi Blue, welcome to the stream. You're on mute, unmute yourself. Uh, tell us a little bit about where, um, where you're from uh, and also your, your opinion in regards to Chelsea's um, um, season. Are we contenders? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello, yeah. Nairobi. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a Chelsea fan for over 20 years now. Uh, I'm really pleased to be here. I've been a fan of the channel for a while. So today I just decided to uh, join in and uh, have a chat with you guys. Thank you. Thank you for joining and uh, appreciate your support to the Blue Lounge. Welcome. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, I think I joined in when uh, someone was actually saying uh, that we're not well stocked in terms of squad uh, depth. Uh, but for me, for my case, I think uh, we actually well stocked in all departments. Uh, I don't think we have a deficiency in any position now uh, for this uh, coming season. Uh, for instance, uh, the first team players who we lost this uh, this summer was uh, Tammy Abram and I think uh, Emerson. Those were the players who really actually had minutes on the field. Uh, that we can say we lost. Uh, in the case of the left back position, uh, we have two already who can start again, uh, Chilo and Alonso. If the two are not available, we can shift Caesar to that position. We can also even uh, fail the uh, Hudson Odoi uh, to be a makeshift uh, left wing back. Uh, in the striker position, um, it could have been well if we. Uh, Jiru could have stayed, or even Tammy Abram. But the two strikers also needed to play. Remember, uh, Jiru was really, really wanted to play so that he can have his, his uh, he can be selected for the World Cup. Come, uh, is it next year? Yeah. So he had really he had to go and play. And for Tammy's age, uh, I think uh, Tammy is a talent, and uh, with Lukaku around, Tammy was not going to get enough minutes to actually showcase his talent. And I think it was a good move for him. We have that buyback clause. He already has, has a goal and two assists. So if uh, Lukaku, uh, if, uh, if Tammy becomes good, we will go for him back uh, after three years. He will be almost 28 years old. He can come and back and replace uh, Lukaku. Uh, on the striker position again, if Lukaku is injured, for instance, I think we can shift back to a false nine, we can have Kai there. I'm more confident with Kai playing in uh, the false nine more than uh, Timo. If uh, worst comes to us, we can still uh, have Timo, Kai and uh, Mount like we had last season. Uh, I don't think uh, we can have uh, issues with the, the striker position. Defensively, uh, we needed Kunde. Uh, Kunde was not uh, a want, uh, or was not a, a want, I think it was not a must we have him, but he's a player we needed because of uh, the age of Thiago Silva and Caesar. It's a, he's going to be a massive player uh, in the future. So I think we needed to have him now to avoid the competition um, for him next summer or even January. Uh, but he, uh, I think uh, Charlotte as a replacement to Zuma, uh, I think. Uh, it's an upgrade to Zuma. Zuma is good uh, in the air. He's an orthodox defender, the old type of defender. Uh, Chaloba is the uh, new type of defender that nowadays coach, coaches prefer. Uh, Chaloba, I mean, I think uh, Chaloba is an upgrade to Zuma for, for my own case. In the midfield, uh, 
uh, Kante has been having problems. But when I was wa- watching the first half against Liverpool, I, th- I think Kante was making some really good uh, runs in the midfield. Uh, if we're going to miss him, I think uh, Saul is also a good ball carrier. So if we can have uh, Jorginho sitting and then Saul uh, making more of those runs from box to box. And again, I think Saul has got uh, a better final pass than uh, uh, than Kante. If you can remember that there is a run Kante made in the first half, if he could have uh, played the ball early into the box for Lukaku, maybe he could have had a second. But Lukaku uh, uh, Kante delayed the ball, played wide to uh, Z, uh, to Kai, and then we lost the chance. So in the middle, I think we have a, a good cover. Saul can be a good a box-to-box midfielder. We have Kovacic too. Uh, I don't really see where we can be short this season. Uh, we need to be... We, we must retain the Champions League. And I'm very, I'm very confident about that. Uh, because I know um, our coach is a good uh, cup player. When it comes to the EPL, uh, I think it's going to be a race between us and City. Liverpool is good, but if Liverpool uh, fight, uh, get one injury or two, and then there is something. But if this uh, Liverpool squad stays fit, it's going to be a three-hours race. For United fans, I don't think uh, they're there yet. United are, are at a stage we were last season with Lampard, a very good coach, a very good squad, but with a, an inexperienced coach. Uh, I think uh, their coach is good, uh, not to the level of uh, Tuchel and Pep and uh, Klopp. So I think United will uh, go for we'll struggle. We'll struggle. Yeah. Nairobi, you've you've made you made some some good points. You made some very good points. Uh, we're going to discuss them. We're going to discuss them. I just want to uh, uh, make one comment, um, and that is all the positions, all the players that you've mentioned, uh, the situations that you've uh, you've covered, I agree with. If we don't have any serious injuries, if we have serious injuries, long term injuries, I think the whole balance of the year of the team will be shifted. Uh, we will address that. Uh, but I want to bring in Sam. Sam is waiting in the back. Um, so Nairobi, thank you for coming on. I hope to see you in future streams. Uh, we'll be addressing uh, your points shortly. Thanks for coming on, my man. Take it easy, sir. Thank you. Sorry, Nairobi. Sorry. Nairobi. Take care, brother. Thank you. I'm gonna bring on uh, Sam. Uh, Sam has been here on the on the panel a couple of times. I want to hear his perspective and his point of view in respect to the season. Uh, Sam, welcome to the stream. How you doing? Yeah, I'm doing good, man. How you How you all doing? Hey, big up, We're doing Sam. Fantastic. Doing? You're right. doing good. Yeah, good, doing good, good. Sam. Good. Sam, give me give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts in regards to uh, uh, Chelsea's ch- uh, ch- uh, title challenge and also the squad that we currently have. Um, how do you see us progressing this season? Yeah, so with the transfer window closed, I have to say we did what we needed to do. Mm. Quite right, we could have some luxury signing like a Kunde, but what we needed, the club addressed it with Saul and Lukaku. And now with this manager that we have, because Tuchel has just been amazing so far, so we can just hope that he keeps on making the right decisions with his signings now. If he does, the title charges full on. If I feel we still need Kante to be fit for the big games. I feel Kante is very, very important for this team. A lot of people are like, oh, maybe we should... I hear people saying we should like start replacing him. And I'm like, nah, this guy is just... We need him for the big game, so hopefully he can be fit and Jorginho can keep on playing the way he is. If he do, if that happens, for sure we can really title charge and hopefully we can win the league because with the Champions League, I know it's possible, but it's really hard to retain it. And quite right, I'm not saying it's impossible, but I would prefer the league this year just to show that consistency and show a growth in the team because I feel... That's what the league does. With Champions League, it's knockout football. You can be lucky sometimes, but with a league with 36 games, most of the time it's not luck. It's about having a top manager, having a squad that have that mentality to sometimes even grind out results like a 1-0 or, yeah, just win games. If you look at Liverpool when they did it, they had so many games where it was 2-1, 1-0, keep a clean sheet, all that. So I think it's going to show the character in the team if we can charge for the league and... 
yeah, I'm, I'm really, really happy for the transfer window. The South deal, if it didn't happen, I would have felt a kind of way because Jorginho is playing too many games. He played the whole of the Euros. He played all through Tuchel's reign. He, he's he's going to burn out if we don't find someone to actually slot in for that position and help him out. So, yeah, it was, it was really great. And hopefully after the transfer window, with Champions League coming, Tuchel being the manager is and being so tactically like astute, I think he knows how to rotate these players. Because if it was a Lampard, and no dig with Lampard, I really like Lampard, but it was so obvious that Lampard was looking for a first 11. And the, um, whoever wins the game, it's almost like you're sure they're going to play the next game. But with Tuchel, you see that whole changing. He's always looking at the opponent. Oh, how can I attack them? How can I be, how can my team like use it and use its qualities to actually win the game. So, yeah, I'm really excited for the season and to see what Tuchel would do because now he has the players he wanted. He kept the players that he felt he wanted. So this team is more like his. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, thank you, Sam. Thank you. Um, you make some some good points. You make some good points. And But there, there is one thing, again, uh, in regards to what you've just said, that I kind of... Um, I'm not gonna say disagree with, but I I, uh, I I think it's not the same as it was last uh, last season, and that was this. Um, to Kel, one of the one of his key attributes was he was so unpredictable when it came to his squad selection. If you look at the past couple of games, we uh, influencers, content creators, in our lineups, we're getting the team. Almost exactly right. There's a couple, maybe one or two players wrong, but in the past, two kills. His first, his first season at Chelsea. If you were, if you were to get three players right from the whole squad, you'd be like, yeah, you know, it was all right. It was all right. I picked three players out of the uh, the eleven. But now we're getting like one or two players wrong. So maybe he's becoming a little bit more predictable. Maybe. Um, can I just uh, say something about that real quick? Go ahead, go ahead, Sam. Yeah, um, the, the thing is that we can't judge now because we just had three games. And sure. last last year, we had the FA Cup, we had the Champions mm -hmm. League, and you know we got to the final of both competitions, and we still mm -hmm. were fighting for top four. So it's if, if we're going to do the same thing, which is um, try to win the Premier League and the Champions League, he has to rotate. So that is going to happen. I don't mm -hmm. think Marcos Alonso right now has competition in Chilwell because Chilwell hasn't played any game. Yeah. Um, Christiansen doesn't have competition with Thiago Silva because Thiago Silva's first game was the Liverpool game. So I do think that everything will even out a little bit more after some games. And then you see the competition in the squad will be actually high. And yeah, I, I just feel it's too early. It's, it's been three games. Fair Let's enough. wait till like a month. Mm. Fair enough. Fair enough. Sam, thank you for coming on. Appreciate you. <clears throat> I hope you stick around in the, in the chat. We're going to discuss what you've said. We're going to discuss what Na uh, Nairobi Blue also said. Thank you all for coming on. Thank you. Thanks yeah, for thanks, jumping man. on. Thank you. Cheers, Sam. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> guys, guys in the chat. What, one second, Boogie Man. Guys in the chat, uh, if you click on the pinned comment, you're allowed to come on and also give us your point of view in respect to the upcoming season, just like Nairobi Sam did, Nairobi Blue did, and Sam did. Okay, so you're, uh, you're able to do that. Um, listen, Nairobi made some good points sam made some good points uh i want you guys to give me your thoughts on what they said we'll start with boogeyman you're on mute boogeyman yeah uh what sam said uh, i think i agree with what he said uh, the thing is mm -hmm. we just played three games and uh, we cannot compare uh to who the selection of last season when he he was only here for half a season compared to this season where he is going to be like a marathon. Uh, the thing is, right now, he needs at least to have an idea on his first 11. So, uh, as it looks like, he needs to gel the strike. Lukaku has to play really good with certain players for us to have a really good start. So, <clears throat> normally, against the game against Liverpool, anybody will say Werner has to be somewhere on that field. But what did we notice? He's trying to force Mount, Harvest, and Lukaku to understand each other. That's why he put them there. He trusts them. So I think we should not make too much 
uh, first of the first. Of, it's not in first. We don't. We should not worry too much about uh, the the first three games. But as soon as he knows his first eleven or approximately who are the three main guy, you will see a lot of changes. Then you will see his rotation. That's when we all be like, okay, who is going to start? Who is not going to start? And we we'll all get it wrong all the time, like last season. This season is just the fact that it, we're only into three games. Uh, that's all it is. Uh, when it comes to what uh, Nairobi said about uh, um, uh, Taliba being an upgrade of uh, Zuma, I don't know. I don't. I disagree. Let me just put it this way. I don't think uh, that is true. But again, I cannot prove it because. Chaluba, Chaluba has not been given a proper run, so I cannot prove it too much. So, but that's the only. I would like him to tell me exactly in which area or uh, why he would think that uh, that uh, Chaluba is a, uh, an improved defender than Zuma. So, but that's that would be my question to him. But he already left. So, I don't know if anybody. Can, here, can I answer that one? Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I think he, what, when he. Met, when you say upgrade, um, I think uh, Chalaba is better with the ball. I, we spoke about that before, you know, starting from the back. Uh, um, under 23 and under 21, I was watching a bit in the academy. He was playing number six. So I think uh, Tuka rating that. That's what I think he meant. I think time will tell, to be honest with you. I don't think we've seen him enough in the Premier League. No, I'm just saying when he, was in, when he was in the academy, he, uh, under 21 and under 23, mm. he was playing number six. Yeah. Oh, and, he's uh, very versatile. Like, he can play in a nice few positions. Which yeah, is so he's good plus. with his feet. It's a major plus. But there's one thing I have to say. that I think it was Bobby a while ago said that um, he was comparing, like, if we might get an injury this season, will we be like Van Dijk without Liverpool? But I think there's a big difference in that sense because I think on Liverpool's starting lineup, there's two players that are leaders in that team, and that's Van Dijk and Henderson. Henderson doesn't always start for Liverpool. He's not a main starter for Liverpool. So I think when they lost Van Dijk, there was no leader on that team. There's no leader on that pitch, and that's why they struggled so much this season. When you think of Chelsea, if you look at the, even a few games Lukaku played so far, he is a leader of forward. We have a leader in Azpilicueta. We have a leader in Thiago Silva. We have we have leaders all over the pitch. So I think there's a big difference in that sense. I think I wouldn't be worried about. Uh, I will. I am going to be worried about injuries because we we, we can't we can't. Every team ha- is worried about injuries. Like United will worry about an injury to Ronaldo. They'll worry about an injury. So it's not just us worrying about injuries. But I think there's a big difference there. I, I think there's one thing that concerns me, guys, regarding the injury. I, I'm I'm very confident in Chelsea's squad. I'm just worried about Lukaku's injury. Nobody else. Lukaku's injury. I don't because... worry at all about Lukaku. I think Rudiger injury. No, no. I mean, if injured. he get injury, if he get injured, that's what I'm worried about. Yeah, I don't care. I don't worry about it at all because I still think with Lukaku, we proved last year that without Lukaku, we can still play good game and keep possession and play good and win games. My biggest issue is Rudiger get injured. If Rudiger is injured, I'm not sure what we're doing. I, I, I'm not sure. That's my biggest concern. So, uh, left side of centre back is your concern. Uh, yeah, I think I think Christensen yeah. can play there. Uh, why not? I've never seen him playing there, but I'm just I don't know. Yeah, have you anybody here have seen Clinton some people? He has he, he has he has he has he has filled in. He has. He has filled in. Um I I I have not seen him start in that position, but I've but seen him come on. Uh, that's actually place, a place. really yeah. good idea. At least in the cup games, we should put Christmas on there to play that position a little to give As the choir can play that as well. Reese James can no, play that. No, Aspen Aspen can play no, no, as as people no, play there. Aspen no. can play that. I mean he can play centre back as well. Yeah, it, it played. We it should played. not be no as as under as on the left, on the left, Kasim. On the left, yes, yes, he, he, he can play in the left, and under under uh, Conte, he played in center as well. When we win the uh, title, uh, when he played five in the back, you know the wing back. Uh, Aspilicueta can, <laughs> yeah, I mean, can play anywhere. Yeah, I mean, Lukaku can play anywhere, but would he be effective? That's all. I don't think. 
my, my, anyways, maybe you're right. I, I, Christensen one is an interesting one because I think Christensen should be tried them more more often. So at least when we had those problems, we don't feel like we've been reduced to using like uh, uh, people that are not really prepared to play on the, the, on those position. But Christensen is talented and seems to be really smart, and he's fast also. So I think he can actually cover for uh, Rudy Gaba. He needs to be used in that could, position more. Could could, could 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 we could we could we start contemplating playing uh, two at the back? Should we start contemplating playing two at the back? You mean four? You, guess, or, you mean yeah, four? Yeah, four. Yeah, uh, four three three, for example. No, no. It's my favorite formation. That four three three. Yeah. I, I let Bobby jump in this. I don't think Chukul would ever, ever play four at the back. It just doesn't suit him the way he he's thinks. To, about he's to play, he's to play at PSG. He's, yeah. Yeah, but that's the EPL. Say. That's the EPL. He's never going to do that. I don't think so. I think I think as a makeshift, as a temporary formation, playing five at the back worked. But I have a feeling it's not because this is a new season. He did that. Bless you. <laughs> Who just sneezed? <laughs> that was a big Bless sneeze. you, whoever that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. Bless whoever that was. Yeah. So, so um, Tukel came in. Tukel came in, uh, played the five at the back system because it's the, it's the sure way to stabilise the defence. Having five, five defenders is the sure way to stabilise the defence when Chelsea needed that. But do we need that now? Does, does Chelsea need to play that system now? <clears throat> I have. A, I have I'll, I'll, I'll let you come. I'll, I'll let you come in, Julius. But I have a feeling. I have a feeling that Chelsea, Chelsea may start switching the system. They might start doing it in the cup because I think we need to have the option. I strongly believe, and, and this goes back to the questions that we saw in the chat: uh, who would partner or who would be good to support Lukaku up front? I think. Chelsea, right now, we are restricting our attack by taking away one attacker, one uh, attacking midfielder. We can do that by you know going back to the four at the back system. Now, does Chaloba? Can, I mean, can can we see Chaloba and Thiago Christensen? Can we see these guys keep a keep a clean sheet? Because really, right now, we're still, we're still not scoring enough goals. To be risking conceding a couple of goals because right now um, uh, the way we're playing is we you know we're keeping a tight tight ship at the back and getting the odd one or two goals to win our games. If we are going to change that system, we might be conceding goals. And, and, and are we scoring enough to be able to risk that? Uh, Julius, man, give me your thoughts. I don't think we can play for at the back consistently because the way our team is built is defensive. And the, the, mm. the quality of players, that, especially the defenders that we have, they don't suit. And that was proven pre from previous year. They don't do well in a, in a four at the back system. Mm. But I've seen Tuko before uh, use 4 2 4 quite often or 4 2 2 2 as well. But with the 4 2 4 formation, I feel it could be beneficial if, you, if we, for example, want to set up defensively and hit hard on the counters, that you'll have four proper defenders. But you could also ask the two wingers up front to play a hybrid winger wing back role, which will which would allow us to park the bus if necessary. You know what I mean? Hmm. So I I really can't see us turning into four at the back right now, to be honest, because our system is working and there is nothing. When something is working, why should why do you want to change it? Unless unless we have. We get so unlucky and probably during November, December is going to be a very tricky period where we get start getting a lot of injuries. You could see Ziyech getting injured. I know Pulisic is injured now or uh, he's sick, but he, he could Vegas also... got COVID. Yeah, so he could also get injured. Kante could get injured. So it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I can't see Lukaku getting injured. I, I don't know if... He, he, he seems to be not that of an injury prone in general in his career. The concern is Kante for me, actually. Not Rudiger or, or Lukaku, it's Kante. If, in, if Kante is, gets injured, we're, we're, we're in trouble, for sure. 
thing is this the thing is this and, and, and uh, before i go on to this point lads we are 24 likes away from 100 um we've got 70 people in the chat so let's get to that um, 100 um, 100 like milestone my concern is this this season is a tough season in regards to the way it's been refereed we've seen more tackles more strong tackles more uh, aggressive gameplay therefore we are going to see more injuries aggressive gameplay equals more injuries and um Players like Kante, players like, I don't know, um, Even Saul, Pulisic. Saul. Yeah, we will see injuries. We will see injuries. Guys, before uh, um, uh, before we continue, we have another member of the chat joining us. Uh, we've got James Matteo. He's going to come on and give us some of his thoughts. Um, James Matteo, welcome to the stream. Give us a yeah, little bit about where you're from. Give us a little bit about your form and let us know what your thoughts are, my man. Welcome. Wow, you guys are saying something about um, three, three at the back or four, um, four at the back. But what I'm thinking is, I don't think that Tuko will change it. Because if Tuko is thinking of changing it, he would have tried it on precision. Because in the precision, he didn't even try it. He didn't try it in the precision. That means he has planned mm -hmm. to continue with what he's doing. And believe me, um, I like I like the play. If I thought Chelsea are playing four. Four four um four three three, Liverpool would have won us last weekend. Do you understand? The formation he played actually suits Chelsea. If you watch against um Conte, Conte used it and won the league. And it seems that Chelsea understand themselves very well in the, in, the, in, the, in in playing that system. Do you understand? That is why you see the likes of Alonso playing, adapting in the game, playing very well. And some other players like Jojiho. If Chelsea leave the um, leave the formation three three four um, three four two or three four two one or something like that, you will see somebody like Jojiho missing out in the team because Jojiho cannot hold alone in the midfield. Hmm. Do you, do you think it's the uh, um, the formation for Chelsea or do you think it's the formation for the Premier League? So uh, is this a good formation to to be employed in the Premier League uh, or is it? Specific for Chelsea? Like, not, it's not a Premier League stuff, right? It's, this is a Chelsea stuff. Do you understand? Mm. Chelsea found it balanced playing this formation. Do you understand? Chelsea understand this thing, they understand the formation very well. Now, bringing Lukaku, bringing Lukaku in with the pattern the man wants to play. I believe, um, I think before before next five, six games, you will see Kante, you will see Lukaku and the Timo playing together. I'm seeing this thing happen, like Timo and Lukaku. It will be a very good pair in the front, and it will be a very, it will be a very strong force in the front because because of the pace of Timo Werner. But the man is not trying to pull Timo Werner now. He wants to try to try other players to know how the team will balance. With that, maybe next week now I might find him playing alongside with him. With the, what, what is that his name? Um, Pulisic and Timo, or Pulisic and Ziyech. Um, 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 what is his name? Um, Lukaku and Ziyech. You try those guys before you know it, you get the best pair. He's trying to get the best pair with Lukaku so he can pull off the season. I believe this formation so, is better, it's better for Chelsea, you know. So, so, um, James, um, are you, are you, are you talking about a two man attack with 110? Uh, yes. rather than two tens and one, one nine? Is it, so, so, you, so you think it's gonna be two tens? Yes, because of if you see where the Lukaku played against Liverpool, like even some people are saying that he didn't play very well against Liverpool with the ten. If Lukaku have a, a pair, somebody like Lukaku that has speed, or play alongside somebody like Pulisic, if you see when he hold down the ball, somebody will make runs. Do you understand? So he can get balance and have ten that will support him in the. For maybe if he get down the ball, he give the ten, and they have another player running off. You know, to relieve him of two men blocking, holding him down. So I believe that Lukaku and Timo will, very, will have a very uh, good link. Lukaku or Pulisic will have a very good link. You know, maybe changing Mount with Ziyech because Ziyech is not, uh, I don't think that Ziyech will link up very well. Ziyech is more of throwing the passes, the long balls mm. into Lukaku and so I believe 10. Z Ziyech 10, is more yes. than 10. 
10 years. A more of 10 years. Mm. Mm. And link up with someone like Lukaku it's, and Pulisic will be linking up. Mm. It's, it's interesting. So be, it's interesting. Uh, it's it, uh, uh, one second, Boogeyman. It's interesting to hear what James is saying. I get, I get the feeling that uh, James believes that Lukaku needs to have a speedster with him. Yeah, yes. Werner. Werner, Pulisic. That, that is uh, Werner. I said if, this, if, 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 if at all Liverpool match is started with Vanna, you will see that yeah. Lukaku would have frustrated the likes of yeah. um, uh, uh, this guy, Van Dijk. He would have frustrated him because the more the time he bring down the ball, he sees Timo making those runs. You know, Matic will I, I, I swear, want to follow up and Lukaku can now handle um, whoever is trying to block him alone. He can handle one yeah. person at least. Hmm. Yeah, uh, Boogeyman, do you, you want to ask James a question? Uh, okay. Yeah, listen, uh, James, welcome to the stream. And listen, Thank I you. like the way your way your link of thought is looks, uh, sounds really amazing. Listen, uh, I just want to say something. Um, uh, going forward, yeah, we can play Lukaku and Werner, but when it comes to defending, that's where. Uh, that's where I have some problem with Lukaku and Werner to, uh, together, or even control the ball. Because for me, Lukaku and Werner together have difficulty controlling the ball or even uh, making one touches, both those players. So putting them against Liverpool will only allow our offenses to give the ball to Liverpool defence, and Liverpool always build from the back really fast you know, and they are the fast attacker so you know we have reason, okay so i think the reason why any coach will be hesitating putting lukaku and Werner together is just because we need people that are real ballers so that's why harvest has to be there that's why mount has to be there people that don't lose the ball really quick because Werner, that's what he did he always losing the ball all the time i mean he's fast but what is that what does that give you if the person is faster than the ball, the ball is always behind him or the ball is always somewhere else. Or uh, Lukaku also, his first touches are not amazing. So why would you put two people like that on the field against a team like Liverpool? I agree with you. Against, we're going to play against the bottom, uh, bottom um, half or Aston Villa, middle, right? middle table teams where we can try Werner and Lukaku and they're probably going to destroy teams. But against Liverpool, Manchester City, I would like to know what if what I'm saying. Do you think Lukaku and Werner can play against team that builds from the back, a team that can yeah, punish yes. the ball? Yes. Do you know? I think so. If Liverpool can play with Salah, Salah, Mane, and the whatever in the front, yeah. why can't Chelsea play that? Yeah. Let me let me tell you something. Timo Werner, we won the Champions League last season. People forget very quick. Timo Werner played the highest play. Those runs yeah. that he makes, him, it, it worked. It what a go. Those runs he makes what a go. Now, check in the sense that um you know why this guy did not shine much in that ball in the Liverpool game. If he drops the ball, nobody Mount is not linking very well now, but with time he will understand they will understand themselves. Mount is not linking well. You suppose when this guy is dropping ball, if you check in the lives of Drobba, Drobba and Lampard, when Drobba is dropping the ball, Lampard is Lampard is there to collect it from him and distribute or shoot, something like that. But in this case, Chelsea need Vanna or Timo Werner, um, Vanna or Pulisic. Lukaku need Vanna or Pulisic around him so he can make a very good contact. That is what I'm saying. Can I just come in, in more, not... please? Go, go, okay. go on, Kasim. Go on. Yeah, I think James is doing... He, he's making an absolutely great point there. And I called it with Timo Werner. I think I'm not saying... Every game, Timo Werner has got to come with Lukaku because look, Lukaku is yes. going to play every game, hundred yeah. percent. But when we're playing big teams, Liverpool, Man City, this team control. You know, going to have the majority of the ball. We need pace with Lukaku to stretch them, and that's why when Lukaku will score, I called it against Liverpool, and I thought if Werner uh, started, we we'll win the. Never mind the draw, of the game, we we'll win the game, hundred percent. Win the game. We we'll have to do that with City. It we we'll have to do that with uh, the team coming to us, controlling the ball. You need to move in to stretch them. Because if you watch Liverpool game, all they did is, the back four, just watching Lukaku. All of them. Van Dijk yes. was just watching Lukaku. Because yeah. they and, know and, no one and, was and, stretching and, them. Kasim, and that's why, and that's why had we stayed 
with uh, with the right amount of players on the pitch, the game was ours for ta- for the taking. We had them, you know, caught out many times in that first half. The fact that you know uh, we only scored one was was disappointing. We could have scored two, three goals in that first half, and I think um, I, I I agree. I agree. Timo Werner would have given us um, more in in, in 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 attack, and especially against a team like Liverpool, who are you Liverpool. Know, easily it opened the easily, game. Yes. easily caught out. Yeah, uh, uh, Liverpool are always uh, pushing forward. We will be able to push them back, and we will, we will be able to catch them on the counter attack. James Matteo. Thank you for coming All on, right. mate. I really thank appreciate, you, thank you. appreciate your feedback. Nice I hope one, to mate. See, Good point. See you again in the, uh, right. the future streams, man. Thank you, James. All right, thank appreciate you. you. Thank you. Take care, brother. Good night. Good night. Listen, people, uh, if you want to be like James, like um, Nairobi Blue, like Sam, jump on here. The link is there. We will be live for about another 15, 20 minutes ish. 15, 20 minutes, we'll be, uh, we're going to be live. So um, you're still able to jump on and give us your uh, your point of view in respect to anything related to Chelsea. We are discussing, we are discussing our title hopes. We are discussing our title hopes. How many likes do we have? 79 likes, people, come on. 21 more likes. 21 more likes. I think we've earned it. All right, listen, Jamie, thank you for coming on, man. Big up to you, big up to you. Um, I know the stream yeah. is going a bit late, uh, but yeah, it's, it's good to have you on, and hope to see you in the um, in the upcoming streams, lads. Um, I'm sorry for being late today, but I did another stream earlier, and I uh, pushed this one back a little bit. So uh, normally and we're so streaming at ten. How was it? On, how was it? Was it good? It, it, it was okay. It was okay actually, Boogeyman. I was I was surprised. I was surprised at the. Um, uh, at some of the people that jumped in because a lot of people in this chat. I'm actually Arabic speakers, and they came on to that chat, and they were speaking Arabic. Um, I, I had one of the panelists. Sorry, more. Sorry, one of the more. panelists. One? One of the panelists came on, and um, you know, it was it was interesting to see. Kasim my my internet Arabic. was terrible, more. I swear, my internet was awful. <laughs> no, I, I felt very bad. No, it's all it's all good. It's all good. Um, yeah, so I'll I'll be doing more of those uh, streams in Arabic in the future. Um, I'm just gonna give it a couple of you know, a couple of weeks, and then I'll probably do one on a weekly basis. Um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. It's um, it's different when you're actually trying to express your point of view in a different language. I know. I mean, DJ uh, probably. I mean, probably everyone on the panel here has another language um, in their um, in the locker, and we do not use it on a regular basis. Oh yeah, it's, a, it's, so it's, true. A, it's, it's a bit hard. It's a bit hard. It's yeah, true. That's, it's that's true. The other thing. I have to always yeah. think twice or three times. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it's, it's difficult for, for me. Speaking Arabic is it, it's difficult, but I, I, I want to do it because uh, um, you know it's, it's it's a language that I've learned and it's a language that I want to you know keep practicing. Um, I'm happy. So oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I, Elias, I like I know. To, sorry, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. I like to ask uh, ask Gigi. Gigi who, yeah. uh, um, Saul Nigel, who yeah. do you think is going to be lined up with most in, the, in our midfield? With uh, Sal Nigas, yeah, for uh, me, he, for me, he's probably going to be more, um, more if, if providing Kante can stay fit, um, he'll probably be more, more with Kante, um, or he'll probably, or, or he'll, or he'll replace Kovacic. But Kovacic, as we know, is not starting games now. So if you're talking about those two midfielders, the double sixes, for me, it's probably going to be Kante, and it's going to be uh, Niguez, I think. You got one that can one that can come one that can come back and defend. You got the, they both can do literally the same thing. One can go and attack. One can obviously defend back. I mean, look, I know Georgina does the same thing, but either one of them, you can either it'll either be it'll either be with Nigue, it'll either be with Kante or it'll be with Jorginho. It depends on how how Tuchel wants to set up and who he thinks should be playing in that position. But either one of them, it'll be one of it'll be he can play with either one of them. But I think it'll be I more think he's gonna you know, rotate. I think it's gonna rotate Kanti yeah. uh, to keep to keep him for the big games. That's what I was gonna say. Injury Fine. record. So I think he got yeah. Jorginho. But for the big games, it's like when we play in City because City don't they don't like to play against Kanti. Yeah, and Champions Liverpool, League matches more. Yeah, yeah. I think to look after him as well because he's getting a bit injury easy now. But we got the option of Jorginho and Kovacic, so we blast uh, this way if you know what I mean. So I think Kanti mm-hmm. gonna rotate the sake of just to look after him. Yeah. That's why. 
You know, one one thing one thing that I uh, um, I've missed is having an Essien like player. Oh, Essien, and this mate. and God, this guy this guy player. gives me a lot. This guy gives me Essien vibes. <clears throat> the, Saul Neges gives me Essien vibes. Proper box to box. The man can yeah. shoot. The man it's is totally strong. The man is big. Hey, listen, Saul Neges is a big yeah, lad. He is. He is. He's, yeah, he's, good, in the, he's good in the air. Very good yeah, in the uh, air. Six one. He, he's, he's not low gravity like an Asian though. Like Asian is more like a. But he has that though. He has that, and, and that's the thing. So. He, he, not, uh, people that knows uh, people that here know Saul, uh, Saul, Saul or Saul Niguez. Saul uh, Niguez. What every time GJ says, it just sounds like uh, uh, someone that know how to pronounce Spanish name. Anyways, yeah, uh, Saul, Saul Niguez. Yeah, yeah, but it sounds better than anybody on the panel. Anyways, <laughs> hey, let, let me put it this way. Uh, my point is, uh, people that know him, does he lose ball easily? Like the man, uh, is he? Someone that is a, is a ball winner. Ball can, ball I, ball can I answer that more? Can I get that more? Yeah, hey, uh, so, so only guys can cut what uh, he can carry the ball. He's got he's got a very good feet. He's very very skillful for number six, and uh, he can score goals. He, he, he for Atletico saw him a few times. He was taking the penalties and the free kicks. So he's got a lot of attribute. A lot of attribute. I think he's a very good signing. As long as, as long as yeah, like we keep him fit and he doesn't get yeah. injury and he adopted to the league, I think he's very, very good signing for Chelsea. A very, very good signing for Chelsea. That it is for sure. And I, per I personally think he'll adapt quite quickly. Um, I think once I mean I've seen him. You saw him. I mean, I mean if, he, if this guy can be outstanding, I know because it's different. It's a different to Spanish league. But look, if this guy can do it week in week out for Diego Simeone, mate, can you imagine what you're going to do under Thomas Tuchel? I mean, it's just going to be unbelievable, and he'll probably be more. He'll probably be more attacking, I think, personally. And this yeah. guy, as we said, low, I mean, he's got a shot on him, as we can see. He can go at people. People don't want to go into one-on-one -on -one battles of him. He just pushes them off the ball. I mean, the guy is just the guy is just a talent, and I, I think I think he'll score a few goals in midfield. I really do. I really do. Yeah. I think I think he's been playing as a right back uh, recently as well. So. You know, uh, talking about carrying the ball and and you know dribbling, the, the guy can mm -hmm. definitely do that. He yeah. definitely adds a lot to the Chelsea team. Listen, people, we've been streaming for nearly two and a half hours now. I'm gonna conclude the stream. Uh, I'm gonna give everyone a couple of minutes to uh, give me their uh, uh, closing statement. Uh, but before I do that, um, I want to check how many likes. Eighty three. Whenever I set a milestone, I really want to achieve it. So, guys, you know, 17 likes away. Let's get that to 100, come on, 100 likes. likes, people. Come on. Um, I, I, want to say likes, big up, I want to say a big up to everybody in the chat. Everybody in the chat today, you guys have been fantastic. You guys have been fantastic. Um, it's been a really, really nice stream. It's been mellow. We've covered a lot of different topics. Last night's stream was a little bit more intense because of the, uh, you know, the whole transfer window and checking Twitter every two minutes and trying to see what was happening. But today's stream has been mellow and relaxed. So uh, big up to everybody who's been part of this. I'm going to go with Bobby. I'm going to start with Bobby. Bobby, give me your, your final thoughts on Chelsea's title ambitions, man. Bobby? Okay, I think Bobby has fallen asleep. He's fallen asleep. All right, uh, Kasim. Give me your, your final thoughts on uh, no, Chelsea's No, no, I haven't. I, I'm oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hey, Bobby. You, you go ahead. Hey, no. You go yeah, ahead. You go ahead. You there, Bobby. <laughs> hey, you, 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 went for jogging. you went for jogging, eh? <laughs> I was trying to unmute. Um, well, where do I start? Uh, I think, well, I think we should look forward to the season. In principle, we have a team and indeed a squad that's capable of competing on all fronts effectively. I maintain that there is a concern if there's a sustained period of absence of our number nine and any member of the back two um, and indeed midfield. We have temporary options, but people speak of using the likes of Rhys James and all this. Um, well, they've been used in-game on one or two occasions. 
that's very different to having to use them game in, game out for a sustained period of time. But do you know what? Time will tell, and we can't be negative. We have to go in optimistically, and we have to go into a season that is going to be like no other for us because we will be, we will be, make no mistakes about it, having to fight on all five fronts. Not going in with any kind of uh, uh, half hearted uh, measure. We are going full blooded for all five trophies. And uh, if we end up getting the key ones, then we would have had a very, very successful season. If we get the minor ones, it wouldn't be too bad, but it won't be good for the team because then questions will start to arise. Um, it's going to be an interesting season, in my view. Bobby, Bobby, if you could have one of all the titles that we are playing for, which one would you want? Just one. Just one. The World Club Cup. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm going to ask that question to everyone, so be Bobby, ready. Be ready. What do be we ready. need that for? <laughs> I, I, no, no. You know, listen, we, we haven't had it. We haven't had it. Oh, so, oh, that's the only reason. Yeah, I don't even know what that more, is. More, just make it two. Make it two more, please. Not one. No, 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 one, 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 one. Because okay. okay. the second one is going to be the Premier League, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah, the Premier League. Yeah, I want exactly. the Premier League. Bobby, thanks for being on, man. Thanks for being on. Uh, I know it's, 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 it's late, so I uh, appreciate you for sticking around to, uh, to the end. Um, thanks, have Bobby. a good night. Take have care, good night. Bobby. I'll, I'll, see, I'll see you thanks, soon. Guys. Cheers, Bobby. Take care, Bobby. Good night. Good night. We'll go with Kasim. Yes, my G. Um, it's exciting, exciting time coming more. I'm absolute. I'm buzzing more. I think we're gonna win a lot of trophies this year. The squad is big. The manager is great. The spirit is high. And um, I can't remember which one of the guys he said we've got too many leaders in the team as well. And uh, Rodiger, Aspilicueta, the Kaku, you saw him pointing to the people. His comment obviously was a hunger. Uh, Thiago Silva, Mandy to the you know, to extend as well. You know, you can see the spirit and fight when he dived. You know, against Liverpool, had a few saves. The team is hungry. I think we're going to win a lot of trophies this year. As long as we look after Lukaku number nine, I'm just concerned because we don't cover this area 100%. Because Jim Oven is, is not great as a number nine, but he can play from the left and can provide the assist and the stretch teams, especially the big teams in the Champions League and in the league like the like of City or Liverpool. So Lukaku will go to look after him. Um, regarding the trophy, Mo, I'm not going to lie to you. Obviously, we have to win that the, the World Cup thing because we never won it before. But I, I, I love the league as well because we didn't win it for a long time. But yeah, I'm going to go same as Bobby as well. But I'm, 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 I'm greedy. I am greedy, uh, Mo. I want to win everything. <laughs> hey, we have to try. We have to try everything. But yeah. uh, if it came down to it, I, I guess the World Club Cup is a massive trophy, um, and it would look nice in our cabinet. It would look nice in our cabinet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can, can, I, see can I just say something more? Can yeah, I just say something yeah, before yeah. I go? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just trying me and my wife because uh, I'm, I'm off work in 23rd of October, and um, so that works out. We're gonna maybe. I'm not. It's not 100. percent we're gonna go watch Norwich game at home at Stamford Bridge, so I'm yeah. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I watch Crystal Palace. I want to watch Crystal Palace and I want to Chelsea tour. But I think me and my wife just gonna go to the Norwich game and it works out 23rd or 24th of October. So because my wife she's a teacher, so she's she's gonna break off from school. So I, we're we're gonna take the lads down to London. I'm gonna go watch the game live. Maybe I'm not 100 percent yet. We're just working things out the tickets and the stuff. So, yeah, um, uh, thanks for having me more. You're a top man. I appreciate that. Uh, and you guys have a good night. Thanks for having yeah, me more. You appreciate too, that. Good luck, good luck with the channel, brother. by the way, bro. Thank, oh, thank yeah, you very much. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. I've yeah. subscribed subscri subscri wait, wait, already. Wait, 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 wait. Kasim, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, guys, wait, 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 wait. Give me a second. Give me a second. Give me a second. Oh, did you get it? Remember, because I had a nightmare with my internet. I. I, I did I did get a message from you, but I think you sent me two. So, yeah, uh, I saw the wrong one is, first. I want the video. Yeah, the second yeah. one I, I sent the link. But obviously, yeah. I've got a terrible internet when I go to work. But now I'm at home, 
So I'm hoping yeah. you, you got it. Uh, I got it. I got it. Listen, people, people, this is this is the link to Kasim's channel. We've got 51 people in here. If everyone can subscribe to Kasim, we'll get him onto 51 subscribers. I appreciate that, guy. Thanks. That'll, that'll, be, that'll be fantastic. That'll be fantastic. Thank you, Mo. Uh, Top man, Mo. Take care. Take care. Take care. Thank you, Thank you, Mo. Thanks for having me. Take care. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Take care. Thank you, bro. Thanks. Take care. Bye, bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you, Kasim. Good night. Lads, uh, Kasim's channel is small. He's literally just starting out. He's literally just starting out. And we all have to start somewhere. We all have to start somewhere. And, um, you know, um, I started out 18 months ago, a year and a half ago. Okay, I had no subscribers. I was you know, barely knowing how to record, how to edit, and how to get my videos done. Things have changed, you know. I've uh, I've met a whole bunch of lads, you know, the, the panelists you see here, um, you guys in the uh, in the chat, the subscribers. Everyone supports everyone, and everyone needs the help of everyone. So, show some love to Kasim's channel. Uh, click on that link, subscribe to him. Let's support our fellow Chelsea fan. Um, I'm, who should I go with now? I'm actually gonna leave DJ Saf to the end. I'm gonna leave DJ Saf to the end. I'm gonna go with Boogeyman. Boogeyman, your um, your two minutes, your your closing statement, and also the uh, the cup that you want to see or the title that you want to see Chelsea. Yeah, I will start, I will start with the cup. That's that's so easy yeah. for me. I, at this point, yeah. I just want the EPL. I don't really care right. too much about too much stuff. I want to win that that, that league because it's like the marathon is like we we just put our stamp. We just won the Champions League, and for me. Winning the league is we're putting our stamp on the entire European um, uh, leagues and just we like we the one, you know. So um, when it comes to how do we look, how do we move forward? Uh, listen, Tuchel has to figure out a lot of stuff. At this point, uh, he came in and do magic, and then we all uh, were really happy. I don't, I didn't forget that Tuchel was sacked in PhD from PhD. So um, I cannot ask too much. All I'm asking him is trying to keep the same level of uh, uh, consistency or, or the same level of performance that Chelsea has last season. If we, if he can guarantee us that, I think we will be uh, content until the end of the season, even, even win the league. Because uh, as a Chelsea fan, the, the scary thing is the fact that, like, uh, I think... Um, uh, um, uh, Bobby has said something about putting people on the pedestal, like you're putting them as the god. Right now, Tukul is my god. Like, let me just put it anything you, it, anybody say, I can say, like, uh, Marina is a, was good, is a good uh, um, uh, director or transfer or whatever, or executive, whatever she is. And I can say, Harvard is one of the, the best. The big uh, next thing in the European football, I can say Lukaku is one of the best strikers we signed. But for me, the only person that can gel all those things is Toko. So uh, I'm not worried too much. We won pretty much all our game against Liverpool. The performance was amazing. So I'm just worried about when do we start criticizing Toko. I hope that time never come because he is good. It but will happen. PhD. It will happen. I, I, I know it's going to come. So mm. let's just mm. focus. Let's just enjoy the ride until the time comes. And then it is Chelsea. Yeah. We know for second. It, uh, it's life. Football. It's life. It's life. Exactly. Everything. So, everything has to. Try not to be too negative, but I always bring the negative side. That's the other thing. So hopefully, you could stay as long as possible and. Uh, he need to figure this out. He brought it. Uh, we brought uh, Raul uh, Saul. I said Raul again. Saul niggas. And uh, I'll hopefully give some break to Jorginho. Like people say, he bring he he brings uh, different something different. And hopefully, you could figure it out. And uh, Jorginho has come some break. Kante has can have some break. And uh, even Kovacic and uh, even Z Saul can have some break. When it comes to our defense, we 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 lost uh, Zuma. Uh, he's gone. Hopefully, um, uh, Chaloba step in and make that position his. And so, even if we have some, uh, I'm happy today that the, the big thing I learned today is Christensen can actually be in the backup of Rudiger. That I'm really happy to because my worries was that position all the time. So I'm happy. So then that I mean 
Chaloba needs to make the, the right position, the right center back, he's or at least make himself uh, he put himself in Chuko mind when that position is required, or someone is in or, or, or when a player is in need in that specific position. So if Chuko can do that and Chaloba can do that, Chris also can do that, man, listen, man. I'm a happy Chelsea fan. I'm mm. just going to enjoy yeah. the ride. That's all I can say at this one. Boogeyman, Boogeyman, yeah. the thing is this. After the international break, we are going to uh, play two games a week because the Champions mm-hmm. League is going to kick in. The Premier cool. League is, is there. So, um, you know, um, the the rotation system that Sam was talking about, we're going to see, we're going to see a lot of things happening, a lot of changes because these first three games, it's not really a benchmark for the season. It's no. a benchmark in regards to results and, and points, but for the benchmark for the season, it's really going to be after this international break when we when we have a midweek fixture as well as a weekend fixture. It's going to be interesting times coming coming up. Oh, Forgive yeah. man, always a pleasure. Always a pleasure Yo. having you on, man. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks take you, care. Uh, take care, Boogie man. Peace out, sleeping. bro. Take it easy, mate. Take Thank care, you, Boogie guys. Man. Good night, uh, brother. Good to see you, Boogie man. See you, bro. Take care. Good night. Cheers. Thank you. Julius, Julius, we are back with you. We are back with you. I want you to tell me, I want you to tell me, our squad depth, our title aspirations, and the trophy that you really want to see Chelsea securing this season. If we can only have one, which one would it be? I'll start with the trophy. Aye. Uh, for me, it's, it's going to be the Champions League. Because, you know, for me, the Champions League is very special. I, I cried when we won. It was emotional. It was something I've never felt before since 2012. We've won two leagues in between, you know, but the, the, the emotions and the, the level of, I don't know, it, it's unbelievable. The other thing is, let's just end this talk about Chelsea not being a big club and whatever, because if we win a third Champions League, that basically is going to cement us as the second, officially second biggest club in England in, when it comes to European football, in terms of European success. So that's that's like big heritage for us as well. In terms of our, our, uh, <clears throat> our, um, our season, and if I think if it's going to be a success or no, I, I, had, I was thinking about this the, the past couple of days and I've thought about everything I've said on this channel deeply. And there, have, there are things that um, kind of kicked in out of nowhere, which I haven't felt that confident in a manager and in a squad the same way I've, I feel about these guys now since 2004. This is the first time I feel Chelsea is playing ruthless football with such a system that is so hard to break. We haven't seen Chelsea like that since the Mourinho days. Thomas Tuchel is bringing vibes of Mourinho back in the days. It's so special. And one of the reasons of my frustration regarding the, the transfers and the board is because I don't want the 2007 to happen again. I feel this team has so much potential and this manager is the best manager in the world. We are absolutely so lucky to have Thomas Tuchel as our manager. And I don't want 1% chance for us to mess up something or do something wrong in the transfers that would lead to him getting sacked or not reach the full potential or at least his vision. And that's why I'm very defensive when it comes to, to that and I get a little bit aggressive. It's not that I want Marina out or I'm against the, the club or anything. It's just I feel the special connection to this manager and the squad that I want them to succeed. So... If you ask me what I think, I think we're going to win the league, to be honest. I think we're, we could also win the Champions League. Uh, we have the depth, we have the experience, we have such an amazing young squad with a, with a lot of experience. You look at Mason Mount at 22 winning a Champions League. Frank Lampard couldn't, couldn't do it, you know? A lot of our old guards who were absolute legends couldn't do it. I'm very optimistic. Uh, I think we have a genius and uh, on the helm and i i'm really really excited for 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 the for this campaign and i want to say something for juventus be scared be worried 
because I think Juve is going to be in trouble when we face them. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I, I agree. Um, they are they are going to be scared. You know, the champions of Europe are coming to play them. The champions of Europe. So, um, but at the same time, at the same time, we shouldn't be overconfident. We shouldn't be overconfident. And I think, um, you know, Tuchel has shown a lot in the way he's handled the team, the way he's handled the media, the way he's handled um, the club. Remember, Tuchel came in on the back of us sacking one of our legends. It can't have been easy for the man to come in and walk in. And, you know, fans are still shouting in the stands, you know, uh, super fan Lampard. So, you know, it can't be easy for, for Tukel, but he's doing a good job. He's doing yeah. a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, you, you and Boogeyman uh, uh, um, emphasize this point, but for me, we have to uh, try to back Tukel. Right. We have to try to support him. And, 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 you know, and, and I know mistakes are going to get made. We're going to get bad results. We may even have a string of a couple of bad results and you're going to start to see some of the fan base turn. And our fan base, with all due respect to the people I have in the chat, Chelsea have got some of the most toxic fan base around. With yeah. all due respect to the people in the chat, you know, there are some bad, you know, bad apples out there and they will switch on Tuchel in a heartbeat. Yeah, there was absolutely. there was switch, you know, and 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 we've got to be wary. We've got to be wary. Listen, people, I wanna I wanna say something, and you know, um, I am not your teacher. I am not your peer. You know, I'm 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 just a fan. I'm just a fellow fan. You can take what I got to say, or you can leave it. It's it's really down to you, and it's really up to you. But we as Chelsea fans, we must and we have to show more support to our club, our team, and stop this worship, player worship, people worship. Bobby yesterday made a very good point. Now, whether I agree or disagree in respect to the person he made the point in respect to, not relevant. What is relevant is we need to start to look out for our team and what makes our team better. Tukel is definitely one of those elements that is strengthening our team. We need to support that. We need to protect that. We need to look after that. We can't switch and turn our backs on that once we start to see one or two bad results. Yeah, absolutely. I want to make one more point before I go, Amo. Yeah. Uh, I've, as a Chelsea fan, I've been supporting Chelsea since uh, Viali. He, he was actually the reason why I became a Chelsea fan. So... I've always craved a legacy at Chelsea. We've had a lot of success. Yeah. We've had, we've won a lot of trophies, but I want to see a legacy. And I had, the, I, I thought that legacy would have been under Mourinho uh, the first time, or and and even the second time, even more actually the second time, and things went wrong. I haven't had that feeling until this this time with Thomas Tuchel. I want to mm -hmm. see Thomas Tuchel stay at Chelsea for as long as we can. Look at Sir Alex Ferguson. He's had yep. um, uh, hurdles or blips throughout a couple of years. Then he came back, won two leagues in a row. Then he had a blip one year and then he won three leagues in a row. So we have to be patient. We have to be protective when it comes to our manager because we always turn our backs to the, on the managers when things go wrong. So let's support the team, as you said, and let's build a legacy. Let's just shut these rival fans up once, once and for all. Because I truly believe with this young squad that we have and this the golden generation that we're uh, producing from the academy, we have all the elements to have a long-term legacy with this manager. Yeah. Yeah, I would, I would love that. I would love that. And Tukel is, um, is the person that I would love to see that with. Um, and I think he can do it. I think he can do it. I think if we are patient with him, I think if we support him, he can do it. He definitely has. I'm going to use this word here. I've not used it yet. He definitely has the minerals to uh, to do it. So um, you know, big up to Tukel and uh, support him. Support him, lads. Julius, thank you for coming on. Always a pleasure having you on, my man. 
um, great points, great um, great interactions. Thank you so and, much. And I, Take and it I, easy, and I, Julius. And I know, and I know you're busy. You're busy at work, and you uh, you dedicated time for for the Blue Lounge, and I really appreciate it, man. Thank you. My my pleasure. Good to see you, Mo, and good to see you, DJ, as always. Take care, bro. Take it easy, mate. Good night, Julius. Thank you. Thank you. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Yeah. No. Um, people, you know, uh, these guys on the panel, um, they're here literally every night, every time we're streaming. Um, they all have, you know, um, in, you know their lives, engagements, work and whatnot, but they they free themselves up to come here and debate and discuss these topics because they know the value of these topics. You guys listening, you guys interacting, we are trying to educate ourselves. We are trying to become more knowledgeable about the club, about the, uh, the opinions that we hold in respect to the club. I don't, you know, I don't want to see um, the Chelsea fan base being associated with other fan bases that are always just standing there shouting on street corners, you know, um, bigging up minor results, minor trophies, minor competitions, and then having a, a hissy fit whenever they lose, which is becoming quite regularly, by the way. But we are not. We not. We are not that. We are not them. All right, we need to have a better understanding of this game, this sport, this team, because we are Chelsea. We are the champions of Europe. DJ Sav. Yeah, mate. Chelsea this season. Yeah. What can we expect? And if we can win just one cup, one tournament, one title, what would that be? Bro, you're making it so hard for me, mate. Obviously, as I said to you earlier in the beginning of the stream, I want us to win everything. But since we can only choose one, look, the one that we haven't got, um, I know and people will look at and say the Prem is bigger, Champions League is bigger. But look, mate, the one we haven't got is this World Club tournament one that I want so badly. I want it in our cabinet. Every time I go and visit Stamford Bridge or go and watch matches or go to them and see this section, I see those cabin- the, the cups in the cabinets. And I'm seeing that's the one cup that's deluded us, the one cup that we want there, mate, just to fill, just to fill that cabinet up fully. Then I'll be happy. But uh, it's that one f- for sure. That's the only one I have to choose. Um, but like Julius and everyone has said on this stream and big up to every single one of them that have been on here, um, I want everything. I want us to win everything, but that would be the one mainly, mainly for me. In terms of the stream, mate, it's been an absolutely excellent stream with you, as always, Baggy. Um, it's, uh, it's it's a pleasure coming on your show, talking to all fellow Chelsea fans. As I said, we're a family on this stream. I think we're a family in the comments section as well. Everyone that's making their comments, big up to every single one of you in the comments section. Every single one of you makes some excellent points in there that we've discussed tonight on this panel. Um, and, you know, it'd be, glad, it'd be glad to, it, hopefully we'll get some more and more people coming on the panel um, that have not come on yet ever. And, and just share their views and opinions. It's, it would just be great to hear other fans saying what they want to hear, other Chelsea fans coming out and, and saying what they want to say and giving their opinions and views. Uh, and that's all hearing as we've been doing now, the others have done. So, yeah, big up to every single one of them in the stream. Um, and as for, and as for, and as for um, what Julie said earlier about Thomas Tuchel, look, the only person that's going to get rid of Thomas Tuchel is not going to be the board. It's going to be Roman Abramovich. And I can't see that happening anytime soon. I think he's wanted this manager for a long, long, long time. He's wanted him before uh, before he wanted Conte. Um, so for me, he's now got him. He's won as a Champions League. He's won as a Super Cup. Just let the guy, let's let the man get on with his job. And if we can build, if if we can, I know it's no, no it's no longer nowadays in football clubs, but if we can build a legacy with this guy, I really hope we can do because I think this guy is got everything we want in him. He's passionate for the football, passionate for the players, the football club, it seems now. He's obviously loving life in London as well now. We don't want to ruin that all now because I'm telling you now, this guy comes available. We do the biggest mistake as we do when things go down and um, and we get rid of him. You just bet your bottom dollar bill. There's so many clubs out there that will take this guy in a heartbeat and we've got to be careful. We don't do, let this happen. So, yeah, all I can say on that all, mate, is as always, Baggy, Pleasure being on your show, as I said. Um, you take care of yourself, mate, and I'll obviously catch you up on your next stream. All right, bro. Thank and um, 
and you, you, you look after yourself and peace out to you, mate. Cheers, DJ. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. Much respect. Take care, Have bro. a good night, my man. I'll, see you, too, I'll see you again in the next stream. Take care, brother. Good night. Thank you. Night. Thank you. People, um, wow, what a stream. Listen, um, regarding, regarding the link, regarding the link, I don't allow links in my streams purely because of trolls. Because of trolls, I've actually disabled links on my streams. The only people that can post links are the moderators and myself. If you want to uh, link me that, you can do it on Twitter. You can tag me on Twitter at the Blue Lounge. At the Blue Lounge, tag me on Twitter and I will check it. Um, I mean, I saw the one for last season. Um, I'm guessing there's going to be changes um, with the um, the new additions. But yeah, uh, tag me on Twitter. Um, Kwasi, I, um, I want to see you um, on the next stream. The next the next time I put on that link. And, and, and I might be doing that on a regular basis, lads. I might be doing that on a regular basis, you know, um, allowing you guys to jump on for maybe the last hour of the stream um, to give me your thoughts and opinions about the topics that we're discussing um, um, on the streams. I might be doing that more regularly. And if I do, the link will be uh, there. Um, guys, you can follow me on Twitter at the Blue Lounge. M Kasim at the Blue Lounge. You can follow me on Twitter and also on Instagram. Um, lads, did we hit a hundred hundred likes? We didn't hit a hundred likes. We're on eighty six. On eighty six likes. If you haven't liked the stream, you got a couple of minutes to do so. I'm about to uh, to end it. It's been a it's been a good evening. It's been a good evening, and I will see you all in my next one. Not sure when I'll be streaming again. Uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe the day after. But um, I will see you. I'll see you guys all very soon. Have a good night and thank you for watching and thank you for being here at the Blue Lounge. Take care, lads. Peace out.